we'll start the June 15th, 2020 first meeting. We'll first call the order, then we'll have invocation. I'll lead by that. And then pledge, pledge of allegiance after that by uh, Commissioner Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem Wilson. Then we'll have the cut roll call. Please stand, please. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we're glad to have you have us here tonight to work on our city business, but we also at the same time would like everybody to know that we're here to work for everybody. That means anybody that needs help anywhere at all, we're, we're open to be doing that. Our life should be one of service, and that's what we try to do in the city of Oak Forest. We ask you to watch over us as we go about our city meetings and go about our voting for what the different projects and help us make sure and lead us in the right direction. In the name of God, amen. Commissioner Brinson? Here. Commissioner Wilson? Here. Mayor Johnson? Here. Commissioner Firstner? Here. Commissioner Oliver? Here. <laughs> Sorry. All right, the um, proclamation for the small city. Did you, did you? That was just hung up on, out in the lobby. Okay. All right, next one is the. Uh, Presentation to award scholarships to high school graduates, Commissioner Oliver. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Um, I have invited uh, several of our high school graduates from our Okoy Youth Council to come today um, to talk a little bit about uh, what their future um, uh, college endeavors are, uh, their education endeavors. I also wanted to, uh, we have a uh, presentation, special presentation for them as well. Uh, so it should be a total of, uh, I think, three here tonight. One has already started. One is already in Tallahassee. He's, he's already started. So I will um, would like for them to maybe come over to the mic. We'll do a presentation. Uh, tell us a little bit who you are um, and uh, what are your future uh, endeavors. This is a, a scholarship that uh, we offer from the city to uh, uh, award them for the, the service that they've done through the year despite COVID. Uh, they've actually been meeting in the youth council uh, for the entire year. Um, Throughout uh, this, this uh, challenging school year, they have endured. They have went through their studies, uh, taken their final exams, uh, sent in the college applications, and uh, endured everything they have to do to get to the next level. And uh, they have uh, completed that. So we want to congratulate them, our, our OIC youth graduates, as well as our college graduates that's here tonight. Uh, so if, if I can get them to come up maybe one at a time to talk about uh, your future endeavors and and we want to do a presentation at the same time. Hello, um, I just got my wisdom teeth taken out, so if, you, if I'm not clear, pardon me. Uh, I'm Rain Bellamy, I'm a member of the Okoye Youth Council. I've been a member since this past October, and it's been a great way for me to get active and involved directly in the city's planning and community, so I am very grateful for that opportunity, and especially Commissioner Oliver, since he's the main person who reached, had connected myself with Ms. Dillard allowed me to be a part of the council. I'm a recent graduate of Okoye High School and I'll be attending Florida State University in the fall and um, majoring in sports management on a pre-law track and this will be very helpful for me. So thank you all. Thank you to everyone in the city, especially Commissioner Oliver. Um, hello. Um, my name is Michaela Garber. I am a recent graduate from Okoye High School. I am attending Florida International University, majoring in marine biology. Um, this scholarship will truly help me um, go into my future goals um, as a marine biologist into saving environment and ecosystems. And this, really, and this program, um, being on the Youth Council, has also really helped me engage with my city as well as helping you know, with the street signs and all the projects we're doing and those to come. My name is Lauren Johnson. I'm a recent graduate of Forest Lake Academy, but I've lived here in Okoe all my life. And I will be attending Emerson College up in Boston, majoring in writing literature and publishing. I plan on going to a publishing company and working there, working with different authors, writing novels, and helping them get those out. 
And I'm really thankful for this scholarship just because it puts a lot of relief off from my parents, off of me um, working with student loans. So I'm really thankful. Thank you, Commissioner Oliver. Awesome. Again, I want to thank all you guys for coming out tonight. Uh, once again, congratulations. I would be remiss if I did not uh, announce that the, the, the Okoye Youth Council is a group of young uh, teenage uh, uh, or high school age uh, kids that are out to get involved in the city, get involved in what we do as a city commission, and uh, they, they do it very well. And once we start to open up things uh, you know, from COVID, we're going to start uh, taking them on different trips. They go to Florida League of Cities. We take them to the uh, Tallahassee, the uh, legislative days. Those are the kind of things they learn. They learn a lot of things about civics that uh, have been taken out of our school system. So I'm very proud of these, these, these kids here tonight. Uh, one kid could make it. Uh, um, his name is Bernie Hendricks III. He's in, in school now in uh, Florida a &M University in Tallahassee. So he's already started. So he, will, he could not be here tonight. But other than that, I would like to bring, bring these guys forth and actually present uh, these checks along with, uh, we have Duke Energy here as well. Um, she said, oh, great. I would, can you come up here for a second? Uh, we actually partnered with Duke Energy to actually provide scholarships with, for these kids as well. And uh, to talk a little bit about what they do uh, at Duke Energy to uh, promote uh, our youth and scholarships uh, and education in, in the community. Conley, Government and Community Relations Manager for Duke Energy, and we are a proud partner of the City of Ocoee and many initiatives that um, is in this beautiful city, and I'm based just right around the corner um, off of Plant Street, so I love this city too, but um, education is a huge pillar of our philanthropy, and I was telling Commissioner Oliver that I personally mentored um, a student through the Valencia Take Stock in Children program um, from seventh grade and now she's in her mid-twenties and an entrepreneur so I know these scholarships go a long way and we are happy to support so congratulations. Thank you. Go ahead and stay on there. Don't bother me. The annual financial report, uh, finance director Roberts. Good evening, commissioners, uh, city manager. I'm Rebecca Roberts, the director of finance. This evening, we're going to welcome um, Mr. Matthew Lee. He is the audit manager with McDermott Davis, our longtime audit uh, financial auditor 
And if you just give us a sec to get the presentation set up, Mr. Lee will be happy to present the results of our fiscal year 2020 financial audit. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here. Hope everyone's having a good night so far. See if I can get this going. All right. A uh, quick overview of the audit. We issued our independent audit auditor's report. We gave an unmodified opinion, which is the highest opinion we can give to the city. Uh, we also issue additional reports as required by governmental auditing standards and state laws um, that state that the city is in compliance with laws, regulations, contracts, and grants. Um, we do have some management comments to uh, to provide recommendations to improve internal controls and financial reporting. Um, I can go into those in greater detail if, if, you if you'd like me to. Otherwise, I can move on. And I'll, I'll be glad to take questions anytime. I don't really have a script, so if you feel, feel free to interrupt me if you'd like me to expand on something. Total city assets uh, exceeded liabilities by two, $222 million at year end, uh, 2020. Net position increased by 7.6 million. Total de debt decreased by 3.6 million. The general fund, which is uh, the, probably the most important fund relating to the city, is uh, increased 2.6 million to 26 million. Unassigned general fund balance increased to 19.5 million. That's the money that's free to spend without any sort of encumbrance or uh, assignment for uh, other purposes. The water and wastewater fund net position increased 2.1 million. What we like to do is uh, give you a five-year look back of uh, you know, the, the city's progress, you know, give you some context for what those numbers mean. Uh, here you can see the uh, relation, relationship between revenues, expenditures. Uh, other financing sources typically include uh, transfers in or uh, debt borrowing. This is just the general fund, so this is your basically your unrestricted money that doesn't have a specific purpose. This is the general fund, uh, total fund balance over time. And as you can see, there's been a steady increase since 2016 and probably before that. Um, this gives an idea of the city's uh, health over time and then shows that the city's financial uh, condition is, is quite strong. Here's a look at how the city spends its money. The uh, public safety is the highest, uh, highest chunk of the city spending. Uh, this is basically typical of uh, most cities, especially cities your size. Uh, public safety is, uh, is of utmost importance to most cities. Um, after that, you have general government. I know in your specific case, uh, things like physical environment, cultural recreation, the big spending occurs in other funds because you have uh, you know, impact fees and funds specific for those uh, uses. Here's a look at the water and uh, wastewater fund. Revenues uh, have exceeded expenditures for the last five years. And this is a good sign. This allows for capacity expansion. It allows for uh, ongoing maintenance and upkeep of infrastructure. And it, has, uh, it gives the city uh, plenty of capacity to borrow for expansion or large projects that need to occur. Any questions? This annual report is, this is the, uh, the, the guy for the uh, comprehensive annual financial report? Yes, it is. Okay, this is the one we send to Tallahassee every year. Correct. Uh, once we, we complete it. Yes. How long does it take you to complete the, the Kuiper? Uh, so ba typically we would do, uh, in, in a normal year, this year is a little bit delayed because of COVID, and I know that there's been some, some uh, turnover with staff, and so we have some new staff that we're working with. Uh, so it's taken longer than usual, but typically we, when the city is ready, um, from basically when we, when we uh, come out to the city for, for main field work, we'll do, um, We'll do preliminary work before year end, test of controls, that sort of thing. But when we come in, uh, typically it's about two months, two to three months from when we when we do main field work to issuance. Uh, this year, because we did the audit 100% remotely this year, um, it was there was uh, more delay involved in, in every step of the process, essentially. Awesome. How long have you guys been doing the, the audit for us, the typer for us? Uh, well, I've been with the firm for 10 years, and it's long. It's been longer than that. I couldn't give you the exact number of years, but it's been it's been it's been a while. Yes. All right. Thank you. Anybody else? Thanks, Bob. Do you have any comments, Mr. Wow. Do you have any comments? I'm sorry. No, I have no comments, Mayor. Um, 
as, as is typical, I think um, the auditors will tell you, along with finance department, um, our reserves are good, um, spending and uh, all of our expenditures are complying with our purchasing regulations and uh, we'll look forward to keeping the budget healthy and uh, spending the money wisely in the future. Thanks. All right. Thank Nobody you. else. So we'll, we appreciate it very much. Well, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to come out and see you. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Staff, staff reports. I have nothing this evening, Mayor. Uh, I have some public comments, but they'll be at the end of the meeting, and then we have some more public that pertains to the uh, plan and zoning vote we've got tonight. If anybody's in the audience or in for the plan and zoning, you want to talk at your time. I've got three people already. So if you want to talk at your time, fill out one of these speaker forms in the back. All right. Okay. To the consent agenda. Mayor, before the consent agenda, I would like to uh, move item number 26 from the regular agenda and let us address that now before the consent agenda in regard to, uh, right. in case you have to leave yeah. early. All right. Is that okay with everybody? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. We're going we're gonna to move the... Uh, Item 26 up to now. So we'll go ahead and, and uh, we're going to be, what we're doing is, who wants to talk on that? Is anybody, Rob? I'll do it. You're going to do it? Yep. Okay. All right, so we have four vacancies on the Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, three regular members and an alternate position that need to be filled. Um, each of the, the mayor and city commissioners were given an opportunity to nominate individuals uh, or to sit on the Planning and Zoning Commission. We have uh, six individuals that have been nominated. Uh, the City Commission will, um, will vote independently and rank the six individuals in order one through six. Uh, we'll do a short recess after the voting takes place uh, to tabulate the results. The um, top three lowest numbers uh, would be appointed to the planning and zoning and then the fourth lowest number would be the alternate for planning and zoning. All right, what we're going to do first is uh, the ones we have here to speak, let them get up and they'll have, uh, I guess we'll give them three minutes. If you're running for the, on the uh, planning and zoning board, and I, we'll go by the first names on this list and go down. You each get three minutes and get up and pitch, pitch. All right, we'll start with Daryl Bronskill. Sure. Good evening, Mayor, City Council, and uh, citizens of Okoy. My name is Daryl Bronskill. I am a current resident of the city of Okoy. Uh, I first moved to Okoy in 1990. Uh, moved away um, in the Central Florida area. I moved back to Okoy. I've lived in Okoy for the last six years. I am a, a military Air Force veteran and I am a retired law enforcement command officer locally. I have a vested interest in the city of Okoy. Um, I have kids. I have a 17-year-old and a 13-year-old son that attend the public schools here in the city of Okoy. So I have uh, an interest in what's going on in Okoy uh, and how I can do my part to better serve the citizens of Okoy and help the city itself uh, grow um, in, in a progressive way. Um, I would like to be able to have a voice to support uh, the city and, and the citizens uh, moving forward to whatever the goals and objectives are for the city of Okoy. Um, I feel that that's, that's very important. Um, I have also sat on the Citizens uh, Police Advisory Board for approximately the last year and a half. So I've gotten to know a lot of 
uh, the workings of the Okoye Police Department, again, having been retired law enforcement myself. Uh, so I just overall would like to be a part of the board and to help the city move forward in any way that I possibly can. All right, thank you very much. All right, Mr. Greg Kiefer. try my best not to take up the three minutes. I just want to thank you for the opportunity to speak to you this evening and I want to thank you for considering me for the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, as you know, Ocoee is a great place to live and I've been lucky enough to live here for nearly 16 years. It takes a partnership to have a great place like Ocoee to live and uh, it's a partnership between elected leaders like you, a capable city staff, and I think concerned and involved citizens who are willing to contribute to the city's success and future. I believe I've demonstrated that I am that type of citizen. I, I served on the Planning and Zoning Commission for five years. I served as the chair of the District King Commission and uh, I was a member of a canvassing board and I've been to uh, many of, of these meetings, as you all know, over the years. So I find myself compelled to try to continue to give back to the city that has given me so much over the years by serving once again on the Planning and Zoning Commission, if you allow me. And I would very much appreciate your support tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Just for, I, I said it, but I know we have two other gentlemen sitting here that, that are putting in, it's, uh, Scott Kennedy and Lou Forges. You can get the form right back there. Lou, you gonna fill out a form and say anything? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> You're next. Yeah, you can fill it out when you get through, Lou. Uh, thank you. You get fined $100 if you don't fill it out. <laughs> Which I get from you. <laughs> Good evening, commissioners. Uh, certainly didn't, didn't, I didn't expect this tonight, but um, thank you for having me up here. Um, I have served on the board um, last year and a half or so. Uh, it's been a pleasure, and I um, hope that my contribution, uh, hope that my membership has been contributed well to the planning and zoning. And I certainly would like, would welcome the opportunity to serve again. Um, most like many of you, um, I've lived here for many years, and um, certainly would like to do it again. I wasn't prepared for this, so. Any questions? <laughs> Good. Thank you, sir. <laughs> he also just opened his new office downtown. <laughs> Call it Main Street Lou. All right. Next, next will be. Joel Keller. Huh? I, I got that, Joel. No, I don't. Yeah, the other one was for uh, public comment. Uh, good evening. My name is Joel Keller, um, former commissioner here in the city of Ocoee, also a former member of the Planning and Zoning Board. Uh, would like to get back on. Uh, we'd gotten off because we were running for office. Um, but now that uh, that's over, and congratulations again to Commissioner Oliver. Uh, so um, uh, now that that's over, we'd like to get back on the planning and zoning. Um, been involved, uh, been living in the city since uh, for 30 years now, uh, actually 31 this year, um, and have been on the uh, year committee, the police advisory, the uh, fire. Um, so I've, I've had a long interest in the community. I, I, having been a commissioner, I know what we're looking for um, as far as some of our planning and zoning because I helped to, to form some of that stuff. So I'm looking to, to be able to, to see that to, to, through to fruition. So uh, would uh, ask a chance to get uh, appointed back onto the commission, uh, onto the planning and zoning uh, committee for one more term there. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next will be Scott Kennedy.
Good evening. Um, I also didn't prepare remarks, but a, a lot of you know me. It's good to see you again. I live in Ocoee. Um, I guess I'll just tell you a little about myself that you may not know. Um, I was raised here. I grew up in Orlando Pine Hills. I graduated from Maynard Evans. And I work today uh, less than a quarter of a mile from where I went to high school. Um, I'm a licensed CPA. I'm also a certified construction industry financial professional. And I work as a chief financial officer at a building materials supply company that serves the construction industry. Um, in that role, I have a lot of experience with dealing with zoning requests, um, managing construction projects throughout the state in various counties and cities. Um, I'm also the president of the Forest Brook Homeowners Association. Um, so I've spent my whole life in this area of Northwest Orange County and uh, volunteering in a very variety of capacities uh, since we moved to Ocoee about 20 years ago. Um, I'd be privileged to serve on the planning and zoning and uh, thank you for your consideration. Thank you. All right. That's it on the... Oh, no, no. Oh. oh, I'm sorry, Dan, I got it here on the side. Come on up. Good evening. My name is LaVon Williams, and I am a 23-year resident of Ocoee. My husband and I uh, have raised our family here. We have two boys, Justin and Jason, who are proud graduates of Ocoee High School. I am currently serving on the Planning and Zoning Commission and have thoroughly enjoyed that time. I am a certified planner. I've been in the American Institute of Certified Planning for, ooh, for a long time. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't tell all that. Um, I'm also an attorney. Uh, I practice in family law, but as, an as also, I trained in planning law as well. And so serving on the Planning and Zoning Commission has been a great uh, opportunity for me to see planning from the side of a quasi-judicial board, to see it from the side of those who are uh, making recommendations and making decisions about where the city is going. But it's also been a benefit to me personally as I am very invested in where Akoli is going as a community because I'm already encouraging my boys, get your degree and come back to Akoli. You know, I want them to be here. And so I want to make sure that the place that my children come back to, or my young men, I should say, I can't call them children anymore, um, that, that it is a place that we all can be proud of. And so that is why I put my name in the hat to be considered tonight. And I would greatly appreciate uh, your support in my efforts. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Now I think that's it. All right, everybody has a form? Mm -hmm. you, you rank one through six. The top rank, rank it will be one, and then you go all the way up to six. So I don't have a clock ticked off yet. But you got two minutes. Put that two-minute clicker on.
microphone still not work? Hmm? Is your microphone still not work? Talk tonight. <laughs> we can share. Uh, Chief uh, Ogburn, can you come to the front? Who did you call? Who did you Chief call? Ogburn. Oh. Or, or Chief Placencia.
Okay. Um, commissioners, um, the top, uh, so again, we were going to appoint three regular members and one alternate. Um, we have a tie for the alternate position, so we're printing out another tally sheet between those two individuals that tied for the alternate position. Um, we'll vote on that. Um, the three that are regular members of the PNZ, the, um, the top ranked um, candidates uh, were LeVon Williams, Scott Kennedy, and Lou Forges. And then our runoff with the alternate is uh, between Mr. Uh, Bronskill and Mr. Keller. Um, so we're, we're having uh, tally sheets prepared now, and so we'll have to vote between Mr. Bronskill and Mr. Keller uh, for the alternate position um, on the planning and zoning. So we're waiting on this sheet? Yeah. Um, can we go ahead with this? Can we con can you continue along? I'm too out of my ass. Can we, you want to wait or can we go on? We can go ahead and get a consent agenda. Can we go ahead and do the consent yeah. agenda? Yeah, let's, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Yeah. I need uh, consent agenda. Anybody want to make a motion? I'll make that motion. Motion made, uh, Commissioner Wilson. I'm consent agenda. Do I hear a I second? I'll second that. Second, second I have Commissioner first. I have two items, three items I'd like to pull. Okay, name them all. Uh, consent agenda item number three, seven, and twelve. All right. All right, so we're going to vote for item, we're going to vote for item one, item two, item four. Item five, item six, item eight, item nine, item 10, 11. 13, 14, 15. 16. Huh? And 16. And 16. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm sorry. <laughs> you got to give me a little time there, Commissioner. My eyes are 35 years old. Then 16. All right. Motion been made and seconded. To those items, do I hear all in favor say aye? Uh -oh. You know, let's you know, push huh? the button. Push the button, yeah. Yeah, we're up to the button again. <laughs> sorry. Motions carried unanimously. All right, Commissioner Oliver. Uh, item number three is the um, is the uh, appointment of the uh, uh, for the uh, citizens advisory council for the Okoy Fire Department, and uh, that is a total of one person actually now. There's a total of 15 members uh, that's on that board, and they currently have eight, uh, with one more member um, actually uh, um, applying for that board tonight, and uh, that would leave them with uh, six open positions. That, would that be correct? Six open positions. Okay, six open positions. Again, another opportunity for citizens to get involved in this. I would like to advocate for this particular board. It's a great board, and uh, they can definitely use all the uh, help that they, that they can get. And again, th there's six open positions, so I would like to advocate for that. If you want to get involved, there's another excellent opportunity to get involved in uh, uh, what's going on in the city through our fire department. Item number seven is uh, for the uh, new K-9 vehicle. I do have a question. So, um, is Chief 
Chief uh, Placencia in the back, I do have a question about this item here. Chief so. Item number seven is actually an item that uh, we're purchasing a new K-9 vehicle for um, uh, the police department, uh, understanding that this vehicle was uh, totaled in an accident. The first question I have is, how is the officer that was involved in that accident? Are they okay? So that officer is still recovering from his injuries. That was a DUI crash where he was rear-ended and the car was totaled. So okay. it's a replacement vehicle to replace the K-9 car. Okay, awesome. Um, well, we're praying for a speedy recovery for that officer. I'll get with you behind the scenes, but we would like to at least um, do something for that officer. Uh, also, um, have we, do we have an estimated cost of that vehicle, replacement cost of that vehicle? So the replacement cost is $55,523.63. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's all You're I have for that. And then also I see that uh, we are approving item number 12, which is the street lights through Duke Energy uh, for Ingham Road. So just to let you know that that is moving forward, is that correct? Yes, Commissioner. Um, this should get it moving. They have a design completed and hopefully with the approval tonight, we can get something going within 60 days. Awesome. So that means that uh, once those lights are up, the sidewalk will be forthcoming. Then. Correct. Awesome. That's great news. Thank you so much. That's all I have for those items. So I'll make a motion that we put those items back on the consent well, you, agenda. You did, you didn't do. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you? Yep, item 12, yeah. That was it. Okay. Three, seven, seven, and 12. And, okay. Three, seven, and 12. All right. Make the motion. I make the motion that we place those items back on the consent agenda. All right. Motion made by Commissioner Oliver to put those three items, seven, three, seven, and 12 back on. All in favor? Vote. All opposed, lock side. We need a second. Motion carries. Do we second? Can, can we do that again? All right, so I, I'll make the motion that we place those items back on the consent agenda. I'll motion second made that. by Commissioner Oliver to put them back on the uh, consent, uh, consent agenda. Do we hear a second? I'll second that. Second about Commissioner Person. Now, any more comments on those? If not, let's, let's vote. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, so it's, it's back on the consent agenda, but I think you need to vote on them. Yeah, we have to vote on them. All right. Wow. I'll, I just what I just said. All in favor of voting. All right, let's do it again. All in favor of the three items back on consent agenda. Not, not oh. back on approval of the approval. three items. The three. The three. The three. All right, let's do it. Vote. Now we go. There you go. Come on. We can stand up for a second. All right. Yes, so um, again, we're going to uh, vote for the alternate on P and Z. And that came down to Mr. Uh, Bronskill and Mr. Keller. Um, put your top vote number one and uh, the other one number two.
Okay, after the runoff on the alternate, um, Mr. Keller will become the alternate on the Planning and Zoning Commission. Mr. Keller? Yep, Mr. Keller. Yeah. Okay, all right, that's so that one. All right, item number 17, the public here in the cell of the city on 2 North Blue Earth Avenue property. Who's um, city manager? Talking on that, or I, I think I'm going to do that one. Okay. What item is that? Item 17. We voted to okay. This is second reading. Yep. Okay. This is uh, uh, a public hearing. This is the sale of the property uh, across the street of Blueford Avenue. Um, that vacant lot um, that the city purchased uh, uh, several years ago removed the existing house. Um, we have had this property under contract or under consideration for contract at least two times, um, once uh, to VMG, and under that prior contract with VMG, we were going to uh, donate the property to them after they constructed a building substantially consistent with the building the city of Ocoee designed, a, a two-story building, a commercial building, um, that would really set the tone for the downtown uh, redevelopment. Um, I think sit in city staff's opinion, this particular lot uh, may be the most important piece other than city hall for the downtown redevelopment. Um, so there was some interest in making sure the development of that lot uh, fit the plans and uh, kind of a look for the downtown that, that city staff and city commission was looking for. Um, VMG has now come back and said they would, uh, rather than build the building and then the city convey the property after construction of the building, um, their preference is to just purchase the building, um, but still build the same building um, that city staff had planned. Um, so this is a contract for uh, the sale of the 2 North Blueford Avenue property to VMG at a purchase price of $389,000, um, which is greater than the amount the city of Ocoee paid for the property uh, several years ago. Under the contract, VMG uh, would construct the building um, and uh, the, construct the building that is attached as an exhibit um, uh, to the contract. There are a couple of items, uh, VMG has signed the contract, but there are a couple of items we need to address in the contract uh, relating to um, an expansion of an easement and um, agreement that we can use that particular lot as stockpile for the construction, uh, structure, construction materials on City Hall until VMG is ready to uh, start construction. So the staff recommendation is to approve the sale and uh, authorize the mayor uh, and city clerk to enter into the, to sign the contract for the sale to VMG uh, subject to modifications as approved by the city attorney and city manager as to uh, the expansion of the easement and establishment of a, uh, a temporary stockpile area on the property and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute any closing documents um, in connection with that sale. All right. Do you have anything to do? No, just open the public. Yeah. I'm gonna open to the public. Anybody in the public want to make any comments on item 17? Item 17. All right, close the public, bring it back up to the council. Need a motion. Motion to approve. Motion by Commissioner Wilson for the number item 17. There is a second. Well, I have a. Well, we have some discussion. Yeah, I have a discussion. We, we can do the discussion after uh, I get the second. You give me a minute. Did you second it, Commissioner Brown? I did not. All right. I need a second. I'll second that. I'll second it. All right. Now, you want to do discussion? Go ahead. I have uh, um, just one question and, and a comment. Uh, when you mentioned temporary stockpile, what would that consist of? And how long would it be uh, set there for? I think it would just be as needed and it's materials relating to the construction of City Hall. We'd obviously have to remove those materials at such time that VMG is ready to con uh, commence construction, but I think it's, it's right across the street from City Hall, convenient 
place to store materials as part of that construction. Okay, awesome. Um, also, just one comment. When this came in force uh, the first time, I voted no on this, this project. And um, I, I think it's a good project, uh, uh, especially in keeping if it's going to uh, reflect what our overlays look like and it reflect what our downtown is going to look like in the future. Um, however, I, I disagree uh, with the fact that the commission went, went ahead on and approved this uh, the first time uh, at the $389,000 without an appraisal. So I'm going to continue to, to vote no on this for that reason because uh, we're moving forward uh, without an appraisal. So again, just looking at it from a, um, uh, a common sense standpoint, for, for my point of view, is that before we uh, buy or sell any kind of property, there should be an appraisal done on it. Since there was not an appraisal done on this property and there is no plans to do an appraisal on this property, I'm going to have to vote no on this, this particular project. All right, anybody who want to make comments? Uh, I would like to, to ask. I know we mentioned that this, uh, the VMG will be building in, in, uh, in accordance with our master plan, but is that somewhere in the contract? Because I didn't see it. Yeah, it is. Those, those renderings are attached as an exhibit to the contract, so they can't deviate substantially from those renderings without uh, approval of the city. All right, just a quick comment. I'm not going to get into long comments on that. But the, uh, selling real estate, if we, if we, if we do it, did a uh, appraisal on that property now, it'd be below what we got to bid for. Because the house that used to sit on it, we've tore that house down. So all it is is vacant property sitting there. And that's what the purpose was, is to sell it to somebody to get the tax base, which would be anywhere from 4 to $5 million on that corner. So why would you go do another appraisal and get a lower price and then have to sell it for that? Now we're getting 389,000, I think it is, isn't it? Yep. All right. All right, we need to vote. All right, any more comments? All right, let's vote on minus 17. Motion carries. Uh, one abstaining. All right, I'm going to. Yeah. Uh, Wait a minute. What, 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 what abstaining? One, one opposed. One opposed. One. I, just, I meant one opposed, yeah. yeah. Four okay. One. Don't get carried away. Give me time. <laughs> He's heavily Those medicated. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, I'm fixing to go home. I, I'm on an hour le paid leave with my wife till 7.15 because of <laughs> surgery. No, I'm serious. I, I, uh, I've had two surgeries in the last five months trying to get something fixed. And this is, I just got out of the hospital again, so I've asked my wife to let me come do a couple of things here tonight, and after that, i got to go home. She's sitting in my office here. So. I'm not going to argue with her because she has to take care of me. So uh, I will. I will be back. At we, our next meeting is, uh, is vacated July for that 4th. one, and then I think the, after July fourth would be the uh, 18th. I think. July 20th for next city commission. Tw what is it? The 20th. The 20th. That's what I said. I haven't seen anything in a week and a half. But I, I also want to let you know I won't be here tomorrow. I cannot sit. I have to lay. So I've got it. I won't be sitting for four or five hours tomorrow for that. Or what day is that? Thursday? No, it's tomorrow Wednesday. Tomorrow Wednesday. Yeah, I won't be able to make that. So I'll be at home. All right. So I'm going to turn the gavel over to our new Mayor Pro Tem. Let her finish up the meeting. And everybody have a good evening. This is the one. We will be moving on to item number 18. We have a second, second reading. First, there's no, there is no first reading of ordinances. We'll move on to item number 18, which is second reading of ordinance, public hearing. Okay, we'll move on to second reading of ordinances, public hearing number 18, the second reading of ordinance for Barker Ritaville, plan unit development of PUD, substantial amendment to the PUD, the LUP, project number RZ210304, 
And we have yes. our development services, Mike Rimmer. Yes, Commissioner Wilson. I know this project, the name Barcaritaville, brings back fond <laughs> memories. I'm not sure who all was here originally, um, but we got a sad turn to the story and then the, what, the future. So if you recall, the, the Barcaritaville PUD located on Tommen Boulevard, north of Roberson, was a, uh, an idea by a vet out of Green Acres. They had a plan to open a doggy daycare, high end, called Barcaritaville, a veterinary hospital, a, some rooms for veterinary teaching, retail, restaurant, the whole PD was gonna be doggy pet theme. And um, <clears throat> we went through a long PD process with them. This commission heard uh, Dr. Simmons was the applicant and a lot of uh, discussion from him very smart man and very, uh, he, 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 he had a plan. And um, just as we got the site plan approved, he ended up selling his veterinary business to VCA, Veterinary Centers of America, and it, it, in Green Acres, and this property was not a part of that process. So we amended the PD to allow Pet Paradise to take over the uh, pet daycare. The PD had an approval for veterinary services, as I said, education, retail, doggy daycare. And um, so out there today, you'll see the Pet Paradise building. The, the portion to the north is what we're looking at, amending the plan unit development to introduce another use. Uh, as part of the PD with the veterinary hospital and the retail and restaurant, there was a large, there was a number of trips associated with it. Uh, after the Pet Paradise, uh, constructed, uh, we amended the PD to have a right here. Uh, what was left could fit a 16,000 square foot retail building. So we amended the PD just to show that the Pet Paradise uh, went on the south side. This retail restaurant was on the north side. Uh, tragically, Dr. Simmons uh, perished in a um, airplane crash that he was piloting in 2019 and the property has sat uh, since then, as it is today. And the trust has been looking at trying to divest the property. Well, we've had some people look at it, daycares and such. And so what they have a contract on and a proposal is to include into the plan unit development a indoor self-storage facility. The property is over five acres. Uh, there you have wetlands to the west and to the south. There's a master stormwater pond. Uh, one main entrance in as the PD that remains. They're just modifying, requesting to modify the plan unit development. Uh, instead of having the 16,000 square foot uh, retail restaurant use, that is before, as I said, it was all one theme. It all worked together. You, uh, they're looking at what we see here is a three story indoor loaded self storage facility and they are look, trying to make it look very similar to the pet paradise so the plan unit development carries one theme with the sort of Florida vernacular look to it and it said it's a three story 34,000 square foot foot plate uh, you drive in there will be no uh, exterior loading of boxes you, they share the same entrance and such so there's no other additions to the PUD for building setback or entrances it's introducing the indoor storage facility as a permitted use within the PUD and obviously until this deal closes they do want to retain the right to have the retail and restaurant and so that's why we're just adding in if this plan goes through it will have a significant drop in trips from the retail restaurant and such so with that be happy to entertain any questions. Do they have any? Um, uh, I know you mentioned uh, you mentioned storage storage uh, as a possibility of, of of a usage. Yes, what they have under contract is with a self storage facility to uh, build this three story self storage. So as part of that contract, it's amend the PD. The use is good. Then they will go through to site plan approval, and at that point. I don't know under their contract uh, when they close on this, but what's being proposed is this plan, as you see. 
that would be the new plan for the PD, that would be the building location, the use, and then the large scale site plan would come back to this board at the next step. And as with, with the plan unit development, we require the elevations. And so if it, building permit time, site plan, building permit, it changes, we gotta come back through and show the commission what they're proposing. So this elevation will run with the property. I also heard you mention where you mentioned restaurant and retail. Yes. How does that fit into to this? The, this so the, the PD just has a list of uses. Uh, the plan unit development is not a zoning district. You can look up and find the regulations. It's per project. So this Barker Readville plan unit development, when you look at what the zoning uses are, it's doggy daycare. It's retail, restaurant, uh, vet services, and vet education. And then now, if this gets approved, also indoor self-storage. And then what you will see is the indoor self-storage is what's gonna come and develop out the rest of the site. There's not gonna be any room left to add other uses. The stormwater pond will be maximized, the uh, drive aisle, there's no other room to provide any other. It's just the impact of self-storage is low due to low employees, low trips where to make all of that work with retail, they could get 16,000 square foot, have more parking associated with it, drive aisles and such. What's the closest self storage place to this, at this, this location? What would be the closest? There is a facility on McGuire Road, uh, across from the Publix. And then you have uh, facilities on State Road 50. One's in the county, a uh, couple that are in the city. So like a mile, I, I don't two know miles, maybe three on miles. going on the Winter's Garden side, going to, I, I don't recall any, or any in um, South McGuire, so it's the one on uh, McGuire okay. across from Publix. Well, the reason I ask is because we have lots of storage spaces in, in the city, and um, it was just really funny because I had a student ask me what was going on behind um, one of our projects, and, and I had to tell us the storage space that's going up, and it was a, a, it was a sixth grader <laughs> said, we got a lot of storage spaces in our city. <laughs> so <laughs> I can't help but uh, keep hearing his voice ringing in my head. There's a lot of storage spaces in our city, so. Any, right, more, take what you want. any more comments from the commission? Okay, let's open the public hearing. Do I, do we have anyone that would like to speak on this issue? I see someone coming up. Let's see what's closer to me, sorry. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Sam Sabali. I'm with Florida Engineering Group. I am here on uh, behalf of the applicant. And just wanted to add to what Mr. Rumer indicated. Uh, you know, the self-storage facility is much lesser impact in terms of traffic. Uh, it's also lesser impact as far as services, water and sewer utilities. Uh, the size of the site accommodates the self-storage and uh, doesn't require as much impervious cover as a retail development. Uh, and as he indicated, the site has had vacant for many years and the owners have contemplated, you know, some of the uses allowed within the PD. And unfortunately, it has been, nobody has been interested in developing the site for the other uses. So uh, we, our client would like to move forward with the self-storage facility uh, they have provided, uh, you know, architectural plans, so it would be consistent with the existing development. Uh, it, it is much lesser impact on the surrounding community and on traffic. So with that, uh, I would ask for your approval. If you have any questions or if I can address any concerns, I would be glad to do so. Thank you. Any questions for this individual? Okay. Thank you. I do have one question. I'm sorry. We have one question, please. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Um, were there ever any plans to do anything else uh, besides the self-storage? That was this the, the the only plan that has been presented was just a self-storage for this particular property? That is correct. The, the PUD, when the initial PUD came in, it came in, you know, for the, uh, well, eventually it became the pet paradise. And 
this site was set aside for future development and some of the uses contemplated were retail, daycare, and different uses. Uh, we have not submitted any additional plans because there hasn't been any interest for any of these other uses, so that's why we are here tonight. I do have the applicant here and he would like to uh, speak to the commission. Thank you. Sure. On your uh, question also, uh, my name is Kevin Rossi. I'm one of the owners of the property. So you commented on saying, doesn't there seem to be a lot of self-storage? So what I do is I run numbers. I have a bachelor's and master's degree in economics from Northern Illinois University in Illinois, and I've lived in Florida the last nine years. And I review how much competition is in an area and how much the rates are for self-storage in an area. And I determine if it's an appropriate place for us to invest $11 million into a project between the land and the build and something that the city or the county is always very happy with looking at and willing to make it look like office property. Uh, there is the demand there. So you point to McGuire Road, for example, there's a very small facility on McGuire. It's one third the size, doesn't have the variety of units. So when someone comes in, they like to see 10 different options available. They may want a 10 by 20, they may want a parking spot, they may want a five by five. So McGuire property doesn't have that variety of units. Banks wanted us to fill 15 units per month, at least one every second day. So, so far I've developed two properties and we have filled one property per day since they opened. One opened last year in uh, February and one opened this year in February. And both of those were in Davenport. We worked three and a half years on those projects. So I put blood, sweat and tears for three and a half years, all of my full time, all of my time and all of my money into developing these. And we are very, very happy with uh, both of those properties and how they are performing. So if your concern is, it seemed like there might be a few too many, like are these things gonna go out of business? then please show me one in Florida that has gone out of business, I would be happy to buy it. Because <laughs> they're not selling for 70 cents on the dollar, they don't go into foreclosure. Uh, when, it, at the crash, when 40% of apartment loans were 90 days past due, not saying they were going into foreclosure, but 90 days past due with banks, banks reported only 10% of self-storage facilities uh, were 90 days delinquent. They have a much lower building cost and with a lower building cost, with the same size building, we don't have 100 bathrooms and 100 kitchens like an apartment building would. So with that lower cost, we also have the ability to run very efficiently and profitably, profitably with 60% occupancy. Instead of apartment complexes, they have to stay 80 to 90% complex, uh, occupied. And when the economy does bad, cell storage does amazing. Cell storage had record year. I can give you statistics to support that also. So I just didn't want you to fear that if something's being built that it's gonna hurt others or they're gonna go out of business. Please, please tell me when you see anywhere in Florida that says going out of business or for sale. They never go out of business. But thank you so much. I'm never concerned with the self storage business going out of business at all. That was oh, okay. not, not the concern, but, okay, that's but thank you so much for sharing that. I, one, one, one more question. I, I have a question. <coughs> I'm trying to see it on my uh, screen here, but it, it's not acting right. Your, your storage facility, <clears throat> are you gonna, I know, I know you mentioned uh, parking spaces. Are, is that gonna also include boats and RVs? And if so, are they hidden from the, the street view? Hidden, yes. We can have some enclosed units after you enter the facility and you park inside the facility. So we'll have a driveway running inside. So after a vehicle enters, that is sealed. If you don't want any vehicles parked in this three-story building with the door closed, looks like an office building, that, that's okay with us. If you don't want any vehicle at all, we'll be able to fill this facility anyway. So we like to offer a variety of services, but after, they're, after they pull in, you won't be able to see them. Okay, thank you, I was curious. Yes, verify, Commissioner, this is not proposing outside storage. No, no outside. Everything to be parked in the building. Okay. Thank you. Mike, do you have any more comments at That's this point? Do you have any more? Any more? Okay. Anyone from the public that would like to speak also on this issue? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission. Do I? I need to read I'm sorry, we have to read the. Um, you tell me what it's for. It's okay. Um, this is the an ordinance substantial amendment to the Barcarita PUD PSP. 
an ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, approving a substantial amendment to the land use plan for the Barcaritaville PUD for certain real property comprising approximately 8.13 acres located on the east side of Tomlin Boulevard, northeast of the intersection of Windermere Road and Tomlin Road, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Amending the list of approved uses to include indoor self-storage, finding consistency with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for severability, providing an effective date. Thank you. And would we entertain a motion at this point? Would anyone like to make a motion on this item? I make a motion to approve. I'll second it. Second by Commissioner Brinkman. Um, sorry, we're sharing a microphone here, so it gets a little confusing. Um, any comments, any discussion at this point? Further discussion? Okay, let's vote, please. Motion carries three approval, one against, and the mayor's out of the room. Thank you. Next item is number 19, a second reading of ordinance for 54 Ruiz Street, small scale comprehensive plan amendment and rezoning to planned unit development, which is a PUD and PUD land use plan, project number CPA 2021-002 and RZ210306. And this is the second reading. Mr. Rumer. Thank you, Commissioner. This is a, a little project. Uh, it's located on Ruiz Street, but it's a little deceiving this is a section of Ruiz Street between Blueford Avenue and North Lakewood so it's 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 really acts as more of an extension of Blueford Avenue with Ruiz from North Lakewood heading to Fluelling being heavily residential uh, this is on the north side of uh, Ruiz Street at Lyman you have the railroad tracks on the south side of the road uh, the property is just a quarter acre and it's uh, vacant it has a zoning of R1, single family residential. The proposal is to rezone the property to plan unit development in order to have a little two story building. It's got 875 square feet on the ground floor would be a one sink uh, hair salon with an 875 square foot apartment on top. Uh, we are utilizing sort of an urban downtown feel for the building, having the building closer to the road uh, as this project is uh, near the downtown core. And you can see on the PD plan, uh, it's got seven parking spaces, including handicaps, got a little carport, and uh, the parcel sits here. Uh, it, it's, um, you know, our downtown core by our master, downtown master plan is at Silver Star, uh, Blueford Avenue being an arterial road, and uh, the city's vision for North Lakewood extension being an arterial in the future. Uh, this site kind of fits in a uh, little niche and an opportunity to provide a live work scenario in proximity to our downtown. This would not be appropriate out uh, in, in the suburban areas of the city of Ocoee. Uh, we have a, uh, the applicant who will come speak as a business owner in the city of Ocoee has a salon and approached me and, and I chewed on it kicked and we, we discussed it and, and, I, and realizing how close it is to the downtown. Uh, I, Blueford on the north side of Silver Star has the first two parcels are commercial. We envision those parcels going north to Lakewood, um, transforming in the future due to the proximity of a state road in the downtown and uh, support the project as proposed. We'll entertain any questions. Any questions for Mr. Rimmer from the commission? Okay, I'd like to open up a public hearing. Do we have anyone in the Commissioner Chambers that would like to speak, please come forward. We will ask you to fill a form out after. Okay. You can do it after, so thank you. Right. Hello everyone, I'm Wendy Ellerby. I'm a local business owner and resident, lifelong resident of Okoy. I um, am interested in designing this building. It fits in with a new urban development that I'm sure you'd like to see. As Mr. Rumor stated, very close to uh, your plans for Blueford. Uh, I am a hairstylist. I own Shaggy Chic Studio Salon, which is currently located on Franklin Street. I've been a cosmetologist for 38 years, and I know that this is where I want to be, the center of good living. And so I have a beautiful vision, and I'd like to share it with Okoy. 
Thank you. Does anyone on the dais have any comments? Questions? Concerns? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is anyone else in the commission chambers have any concerns or questions? If not, we'll close that public hearing. And could you please read? Yes. Ordinance, please. Um, I'll read the um, ordinance for the comp plan amendment. This is an ordinance of the city of Ocoee amending the Ocoee Conference and Plan as adopted on September 18, 1990, 1991, by ordinance number 9128 as amended. Amending the future land use map of the Ocoee Conference and Plan to change the future land use designation from low density residential to commercial for certain real property containing approximately 0.25 acres located on the north side of Ruiz Street and the northeast corner of Lyman Street and Ruiz Street, providing for and authorizing the revision of the official city future land use map, repealing and conflicting ordinances, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. And then the rezoning ordinance is an ordinance of the city of Ocoee, Florida, changing the zoning classification from R1 single family dwelling to a COE PUD planned unit development on certain real property containing approximately 0.25 acres located on the north side of Ruiz Street at the northeast corner of the intersection of Lyman Street and Ruiz Street pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Finding su such zoning to be consistent with the COE Conference of Plan, providing for and authorizing the revision of the official city zoning map, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for severability, providing for an effective Thank you. Um, we didn't pay a motion at this time. We're hmm. gonna vote just on A. Just and we're just voting on a, item A, which is 19A. The small scale comp plan amendment ordinance. But, Wayne, you can entertain a motion? I'd like to make a motion that we approve uh, item, uh, item A of, of uh, 19. Motion made by Commissioner Oliver, seconded by? Second. By Commissioner Firstner. Any further discussion? Just wanted to make a comment at this point that I did have a resident who was concerned during our when it was a first reading, and those concerns have been alleviated. So we're not there's no issues from any comments that were made in the previous um, that we submitted. I believe they're on our agenda the last time. So let's vote. Passes unanimously with the mayor not not the meeting. Um, item B, do we entertain a motion for item B, which is a uh, second reading of the rezoning ordinance? I'd also like to make a motion that we approve item B. Commissioner uh, Oliver made the, made the motion, seconded by, anyone want to say? I'll second it. Commissioner, <laughs> you're welcome. Um, seconded by Commissioner Brinson. Any further discussion? Let's vote. Motion passes, four. In the room. Um, item number 20, which was second reading of ordinance for 409 Ocoee Apopka Road planned unit development, PUD annexation and rezoning to PUD and PUD land use plan, projects number AX02-2102 and RZ210202, and I guess it's Director Rumor. Yes, uh, this project is a uh, um, kind of showing us what's going on, how, how the city development's really popular as we're seeing stuff happen in the downtown. This project is located on Coe Apopka Road, just north of Silver Star. It's, uh, you have, as you go from Silver Star up a Coe Apopka Road, you have the Sobix Shopping Center, the, the Hispanic Christian Church, and then this property. Uh, it's annexing in to the city of Coe, and the proposal is to uh, construct two buildings, on the east side of the road, if you've been by recently, the Vermeer headquarters is f finalizing. They're, they're acu actually occupying the site. It's 4.76 acres, and the uh, proposal is a rezoning to PUD. In our joint planning area, the property had a commercial, heavy commercial land use upon annexation. What they're proposing is along the front, two buildings along Akoya Pop Road will be a 29,000 square foot flex office, office flex building, and then a 32,000 square foot ancillary industrial building, uh, non-metal skin in the rear. As you can see in the site plan, they will have an access point on Akoya Pop Road, two access points. You'll have the, the, they'll have the building will have a retail front, 
it's at grade level, and then you have the ancillary building, uh, industrial uh, ancillary building in the back, stormwater pond in between it, and the Pioneer Key. Uh, this area of the Ocoee is the business character area. Everything north of Palm Drive going up to the blueberry fields is in a special overlay this commission adopted in 2017, uh, where on the properties on the east side of the road are not within this overlay, but this uh, developer is coming in and meeting the intent of the overlay, creating uh, business, job opportunities. It'll be a great addition across from the Vermeer. That's sort of the Ocoee Popka Road corridor. Uh, this one bookend's really starting to take shape with a building like this, the Vermeer, the realignment of Palm Drive that this commission approved to start uh, helping the Silver Star Road corridor. Uh, this is a similar properties like this on Story Road and Winter Garden. These, these buildings have a retail front. They may be a blue collar, maybe a restaurant. They, they intermix, maybe an office takes up four or five units along the front, but it has that retail look, which is really nice. And this is an annexation. The, annex is, the property is vacant. The annexation is eligible because it's, it's sitting there by a little enclave. So it touches city property on all four sides. And the uh, rezoning is a plan unit development specifically to this rendering and to this plan. At the next step, the site plans, you guys will see this. A final site plan and, and this rendering again. With that, I'll entertain any questions. We don't see, oh, I'm sorry, do you have a question? Okay, you, you know the I word is coming up. <clears throat> the word of infrastructure. How would this impact, because that road right now is a two lane road. Yes. So what are we doing to address that? Because it's coming. Yes. The problem's gonna come. Akoe Apopka Road is a two lane road it's under the ownership and maintenance of Orange County. As part of our joint planning area agreement that the city and county adopted in 2019, we have a provision where specifically we discuss a Coe Popka Road becoming a uh, sort of a more of a complete street segment road and not a your traditional four lane divided highway. So we envision a Coe Popka Road looking more like Blueford and less like Clark Road four lane divided. With that, as part of our character area overlay, there will be a 12 foot trail on the west side of Ocoee Popka and a wide walk on the east side. This is our only direct connection to the West Orange Trail from our downtown. This roadway corridor is very vital to be a mixed use center. That's what the overlay fosters, the, the ability to have retail office like the, the, the first home run we got was the Vermeer's headquarters right across the road in this area. So it's a place for jobs during the day and a place on the weekends where you can utilize the trail and have safe crossings. Right, and so and what they will do is dedicate right away to help facilitate the width we need for that future road segment. Okay, because that's what I'm looking for. Yes, I'm so they're gonna dedicate lot. right away, pay impact fees. Yeah, because <laughs> because we're, Obviously, uh, Akoya Popka Road all the way up to, in, in, really up in, into Apopka is a challenge for us. And so, you know, I know growth is, is, is it's imminent. We, we can't really stop it. However, uh, our roads are, are what they are. But we, we the city is going to be left with the bag if we do not encourage yes. or even require some assistance from these uh, developers coming in. Uh, that's going to adversely affect the infrastructure as it currently stands. So, again, infrastructure will be a big deal. I know you said that there's going to be some impact fees, you know, widening of roads, putting in turning right. lanes. I know there's a turning lane at Silver Star and Okoye Popka, but if you put something like this in, will that, will that distance be enough to yeah. accommodate left-hand turns? Yes, yeah, so what's going to happen, what's different is the extension, if I can get my cursor, the extension of Palm, yeah. the realignment of Palm Drive, will open as the full access point. The existing Palm Drive will be a right in, right out, so you will not be able to make a left anymore. At this point, you will have to come up and make the left at this point. That will bring those cars that stack out of the intersection. 
This is an annexation. This is not a land use amendment. The land use that we have in our comp plan and our joint planning area agreement has this all being commercial. So that is taken as background trips when projects come in and do a traffic study. That's what's different from the Progress Commercial Park we're reviewing. That 40 acres was low density residential, 240 homes. They have to show us by changing the land use, they could go to 5 million square feet, but they're going less under a PD. So they've got to test that and show and see everything that's wrong. This site's coming in under the land use. So the, the trips are kind of programmed that this property is already going to generate commercial style trips. The number of trips in commercial retail is a higher trip count. Uh, lower trip count in the peak time, AM and PM. The, or PM. The, what helps this project in a way is the retail is up front. The building in the back is not going to be utilized as retail. It's, it's more, it's got the dock height, it's gonna have more storage, some office space. The front's gonna be the retail. So the full five acres is not developing as heavy retail. So that will kind of lower some of the trips that this site could generate. But because it was already envisioned to be commercial, we're not testing level of service. It's strictly what happens at the site. They've got to go through Orange County to get those driveways permitted and, and looked at the turn lanes that will come in here and how it, how it reacts with Vermeers. Because we're not looking at level of service, this is not a land use change, we don't get to look at all the deficiencies down the road. And that's the only place where we can, if there was a deficiency, say, hey, you've got to mitigate that or help overcome that some way through some project, through some mitigation payment. Any, with, any further questions? Yeah, Mike, uh, we will be widening McGuire somewhere in that area, won't we? Where we, will that start and stop? We have uh, plans and um, to widen McGuire from Old Time Pottery up to Story Road. We have physical plans, design engineered. We have to refresh them, they're a little old. We, had to, we have to acquire one piece of right away to facilitate that project and get it funded. As, as part of the overlay, I can't show you here, but we do have, an, we do have, there's a road to the west in between Okoye Popka and 429 called Pine Street. In the overlay, it envisions Pine Street becoming another east, north, south uh, parallel road to Okoye Popka. Progress Energy project that you will be seeing in about a month is providing an east-west road as part of the overlay to connect you to that future Pine Street. So what we're going to have here we go. Uh, Pine Street becomes a regular 55, 60 foot right away where you'll have internal capture of trips that will parallel to Okoye Popka Progress Commercial Park where the blueberry fields. They're providing the first east-west as an, another project that comes in down. Uh, on Okoye Popka, we'll get a, we're looking at a second opportunity for an east-west road. So you will have sort of another way, another relief valve. So you don't necessarily have to use Okoye Popka Road. And then in the future, we will have the extension of Worst Road, which will come out up here, provide that east-west connection so you can utilize a portion of Okoye Popka Road and get right over the Lakewood. There's a, on Lakewood Avenue, you have Cleaner Cove. There's a subdivision there. That road will punch through. In our comp plan, we have a future plan to punch the road through. We own most of the land to do that extension, except a parcel right in between the right-of-way and our Rogers property. Any further questions? Nope. Okay, so public hearing. So we'll open the public hearing up. We have someone coming forward, like to speak. Thank you. You can fill it out after. Thank you. Just give us your first name, or your name would be fine. Good evening, my name is Bruce Taylor from Dave Schmidt Engineering, 12301 Lake Hunter Hill. I'm here to answer any questions, if you have any more. Any further questions? No? We're, we're good then, unless Thank you have you. something you wanna say. That was easy. That was easy. Thank you. Uh, any for anyone in the audience? Commission Chambers that would like to speak? If not, we'll close the public hearing and we'll ask the attorney to read the ordinance, please. Okay. 
This is the annexation ordinance. <clears throat> this is an ordinance of the city of Ocoee annexing into the corporate limits of the city of Ocoee, Florida, certain real property containing approximately 4.76 acres located on the east side of Ocoee Poplar Road, approximately 500 feet north of West Silver Star Road, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Finding said annexation to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, the Ocoee City Code providing for and authorizing the updating of official city maps, providing direction to the city clerk, providing for severability, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for an effective date. And the rezoning ordinance is an ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, changing the zoning classification from Orange County A1, Rural Agricultural, to City of Ocoee PUD Planned Unit Development on certain real property containing approximately 4.76 acres, located on the east side of Ocoee Popka Road, approximately 500 feet north of West Silver Star Road, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Finding such zoning to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, providing for and authorizing the revision of the official city zoning map, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. Okay. I'm going to go down separate, separately, yep. correct? Okay, we entertain a motion for a second reading of the annexation ordinance. I'll Good. make a motion for annexation. We have a second? A second. Okay, motion was made by Commissioner Firstner, seconded by Commissioner Oliver. Any further discussion? Let's vote. Motion carries with the mayor out of not in attendance. Um, let's go to number 22 with second reading of ordinance for AP and AG Investment Group, LLC. Do we have the wrong one? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm jumping Result. the gun here. Yeah. Hey, you know, I've, I haven't done this in a long time. Be patient with me. Item number B, do I have a, entertain a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the rezoning ordinance. I'll second. And second, ma motion made by Commissioner Firstner, second by Commissioner Oliver for the second reading of the rezoning ordinance. For item number 20, let's vote if there's no discussion. Again, motion carries with the mayor not in attendance. Now I can move on to <laughs> 21. 21. Second reading of ordinance for West Orange Park Properties 12 LLC 2100 West Road annexation and rezoning projects number AX 03-2103 and RZ-210303. And we have a new face here, Mr. Hines, our planner. Thank you. We'll try to be easy on you. How's that? Okay. <laughs> good evening. <laughs> good yes. Evening. Good, good evening, Commission. Um, yes, my name is Gregory Hines. I'm the planner one with the city of Ocoee. The first project we have is 21 West Road. This is just an area view of the property. It's located just um, directly on West Road. The property is 3.8 acres and currently is zoned as A1, Orange County. It is eligible to annex into the city of Ocoee because located on the north West and south is um, city of Ocoee. This is just a future land use map showing the area being primary commercial and the applicant is asking to be rezoned from Orange County A1 agriculture to city of Ocoee C2 general commercial. And staff and the DRC and also the planning and zoning commission all um, unanimously agree for the rezoning from A1 to C2. And if you have any question regarding that annexation, I can answer them. Any questions for Mr. Hines? Hey, we're easy. It's easy tonight for you. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is. It's, he's, it's his first time here. It's scary. <laughs> okay. Um, it's a public hearing. Anyone in the audience like to speak on this item? If not, we'll close the public hearing. This is an ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, annexing into the corporate limits of the City of Ocoee, Florida, certain real property containing approximately 3.08 acres, located on West Road, approximately 850 feet east of Ocoee Popka Road, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Finding said annexation to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, the Ocoee City Code, 
providing for and authorizing the updating of official city maps, providing direction to the city clerk, providing for severability, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for an effective date. And the rezoning ordinance is an ordinance of the city of Ocoee, Florida, changing the zoning classification from Orange County A1, rural agricultural to city of Ocoee C2, community commercial, on certain real property containing approximately 3.08 acres, located on West Road, approximately 850 feet east of Coe Popka Road, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner, finding such zoning to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, providing for and authorizing the revision of the official city zoning map, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. Thank you. Um, okay, we're gonna go ahead and um, ask for, entertain a motion for item A, second reading the annexation and ordinance. Um, Commissioner, I'll, I'm sorry, I just want to add a quick question. Is it okay to, uh, to um, uh, um, make a motion for both items at one time or we have to do it one at a time? I just believe question. we have to do them separately. Yeah, yeah we, we should, we, we should. Do them okay. Well, I make a motion that we uh, approve uh, item A, the uh, annexation. Okay, motion made by Commissioner Oliver for item A. Second by Commissioner Brinson. Any further questions? Let's vote. Motion carries with the mayor not in attendance. Let's do item B. Do we entertain a motion for item B? Uh, I'll uh, make a motion that we uh, approve the re uh, rezoning of the ordinance. Thank you. Item A. Do we have a second? We second. Okay, motion made by Commissioner Brinson for the second reading of rezoning ordinance for item number 21, seconded by Commissioner Firstner. If there's no further discussion, let's vote. Motion carries with the mayor not in attendance. Item number 22, second reading of ordinance for the AP and AG Investment Group LLC at 529 First Street annexation and rezoning Projects number AX042104 and RZ210407 and Planner Hines. So we have the next property, which is 529 um, First Street. This is just the location map. It's located just south of Center Street and north of East Silver Star Road. The property is 0 0.16 acres in size and the rezoning would be from R2 to R1. This is gonna be rezoned from R2 Orange County, which is single family, to R1, city of Ocoee. This here is just the area view of the property. It is eligible to annex into the city of Ocoee because directly north, um, it touches with the city of Ocoee. This is just a future land use map showing how it is in line with our future land use of low density residential. And the development review committee, P and Z, and also staff also recommend the rezoning from Orange County R2 single family to City of Ocoee R1 single family. And if you have any questions, I can answer those about this annexation or rezoning. Any questions from the dais for Mr. Hines? If not, we'll open the public hearing Anyone in the commission chambers like to speak on this? See no one jumping up, so we'll close the public hearing. And if Mr. Crookson, if you could read the ordinance, please. Yes, this is the annexation ordinance, an ordinance of the city of Ocoee, Florida, annexing into the corporate limits of the city of Ocoee, Florida, certain real property containing approximately 0.16 acres, located on the east side of First Street, approximately 289 feet south of Center Street, and about 338 feet northeast of the intersection of Nay Street and First Street, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Finding said annexation to be consistent with the Ecoe Comprehensive Plan, the Ecoe City Code providing for and authorizing the updating of official city maps, providing direction to the city clerk, providing for severability, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for an effective date. And the rezoning ordinance is an ordinance of the city of Ecoe, Florida, changing the zoning classification from Orange County R1 single family to City of Ocoee R1 single family dwelling on certain real property containing approximately 0.16 acres located on the east side of 1st Street, approximately 289 feet south of Center Street, and about 338 feet northeast of the intersection of Nay Street and 1st Street. 
pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner, finding such zoning to be consistent with the Akoi Conference plan, providing for and authorizing the revision of the official city zoning map, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. Thank you. At this point, we'll entertain a motion for the second reading of the annexation ordinance for item number 22. Do we hear a motion? Okay. Do you want? Yeah, I, I have a question. Uh, on the it's zoned for the county. What is it zoned as currently? It's zoned. Yeah, it's zoned as R1. And for the city, it would be zoned. It would be zoned to R1. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I, I said R2, but I yes, said you did. R1. Yeah. I be thinking. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Do we? Can we? I'll entertain a motion from the dais for item A, second reading annexation ordinance. I'll make a motion to approve the annexation. Motion made by Commissioner Firstner. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Second by Commissioner Brinson. Any further questions or discussion? Let's vote. <laughs> Item passes with the mayor not in attendance. Item B, second reading of rezoning ordinance. Do we entertain a motion from the dais for that? I'll make a motion that we approve the rezoning. Item 23. 22. 20. Are we 22? 22B. 22B. Thank you. Um, motion made for item 22B by Commissioner Brinson. Do we have a second? No second. Seconded by Commissioner Firstner. Any further discussion? Let's vote. Again, motion carries with the mayor not in attendance. Uh, we're moving on to item number 23, the second reading of ordinance for the Garrow property at 102 Worst Road, annexation and rezoning, projects number AX 042105 and RZ 210408. And Planner Hines, you. you're on. So this is another annexation we have. It's 102 Worst Road. It's located just north of north, um, Worst Road, and it's a little bit, it's right next to um, North Lakewood Avenue in that area. This um, applicant, it is eligible to annex into the city because it's 0 0.17 acres in size, and this one is actually zone R2. So I jumped ahead earlier, but this one is R2 zoning, and it's gonna be rezoned to R1, city of Okoe. This is just the area view of the property, showing you where it's located at. And the property is eligible to annex into the city because it touches um, the city of Okoe to the north right here. Um, they're also, just like with the other property, what I forgot to mention earlier too, is they're also connected, not only because they're eligible, because also because of, um, for water. And this is just a future land use map showing you that that's area's primary low, low density residential, so it will be in line with our um, future land use. And same with the other project, the DRC, um, staff and also the Planning and Zoning Commission all recommended for us to rezone for R2, Orange County, to R1, City of Okoe for single family zoning. And if you have any questions regarding this annexation, I can answer those as well. Any questions for Mr. Hines? If not, we'll open the public hearing. Anyone in the chambers have any comments or concerns regarding this issue? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Mr. Cookson, could you please read the ordinances? Yes, this is the annexation ordinance, an ordinance of the city of Ocoee, Florida, annexing in, into the corporate limits of the city of Ocoee, Florida, certain real property containing approximately 0.17 acres located directly to the north side of Worst Road, approximately 175 feet east of North Lakewood Avenue, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Finding said annexation to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, the Ocoee City Code, providing for and authorizing the updating of official city maps, providing direction to the city clerk, providing for severability, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for an effective date. And the rezoning ordinance is an ordinance of the city of Ocoee, Florida, changing the zoning classification from Orange County R2 single family to city of Ocoee R1 single family dwelling on certain real property containing approximately 0.17 acres, located directly on the north side of Worst Road, approximately 175 feet east of North Lakewood Avenue, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Finding such zoning to be consistent with the Ocoee Conference of Plan, providing for and authorizing the revision of the official city zoning map, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. Okay. Yep. 
If there aren't any, any further questions, we'll entertain a motion on item A, 23A. I'll make a motion that we, uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the annexation uh, for item 23A. Okay, motion made by Commissioner Brinson. Do I'll I hear second. a second? I'll second. Mm -hmm. Second by Commissioner Oliver. If there's no further discussion, let's vote. Again, motion carries with the mayor not in attendance. Let's move on to item number 24. B. This, we still have B. I mean, I'm sorry. See, I'm jumping ahead here. Um, entertain a motion for item B, 23B, which is a second reading of rezoning ordinance. I'll make a motion to approve item B for the, for the reading of the rezoning ordinance. Motion made by Commissioner Oliver. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Seconded by Commissioner Brinson. If, without any further questions, let's vote. Do you have a question, Commissioner First? I'm sorry. No, no, no. Okay, I'm sorry. No. Let's vote. Motion carries with the mayor not in attendance. Thank you. You're catching me here. Item number 24, which is a second reading of ordinance for the Ocoee Rental Trust Properties at 503 Second Street, annexation and rezoning. Projects number AX042106 and RZ210409. And again, Planner Hines. Thank you. So we have 503 Second Street. This is also located just north of East Silver Star Road, south of Center Street. The property is about a quarter of an acre in size. And right now it's zoned as R1 Orange County. We're proposing to change that to R1 City of Ocoee, single family zoning. This is just an area view of the property showing where it's located at. The property is eligible to annex because it's surrounded by the city of Ocoee to the north. And they're also connected for water connection as well. This is just a future land use map again, just showing you the area being primary low density residential. So it is in line with our future land use. And um, this annexation, the DRC planning is on the commission as well as staff all recommend for the rezoning from R1 single family to city of McCoy R1 single family. And if you have any question about this annexation, I can answer those. Any questions for Mr. Hines from the dais? If not, we'll open the public hearing. Is there anyone that would like to speak on this? Not seeing anyone move forward, we'll close the public hearing. Could you please read the ordinance, Mr. Cookson? Yes, this is an annexation ordinance, an ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, annexing into the corporate limits of the City of Ocoee, Florida, certain real property containing approximately 0.25 acres located on the east side of 2nd Street, approximately 510 feet south of Center Street, and about 735 feet north of East Silver Star Road pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner, finding said annexation to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, the Ocoee City Code, providing for and authorizing the updating of official city maps, providing direction to the city clerk, providing for severability, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for an effective date. And the rezoning ordinance is an ordinance of the City of Ocoee, Florida, changing the zoning classification from Orange County R1, single family, to City of Ocoee R1 single family dwelling on certain real property containing approximately 0.25 acres located on the east side of 2nd Street, approximately 510 feet south of Center Street, and about 735 feet north of East Silver Star Road, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner, finding such zoning to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, providing for and authorizing the revision of the official city zoning map, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for severability, providing for an effective Thank you. Unless we have any further discussion, I'd entertain a motion for the second reading of the annexation ordinance, which is 24A. I'll make a, <laughs> I'll make a motion that we approve uh, the annexation ordinance for item 24A. Thank you. Motion made by Commissioner Brinson. Do we hear a second? I'll second. Second by Commissioner Oliver. If there's no further discussion, let's vote. Again, item passes with the mayor not in attendance. I won't miss this. We are in, we have item number B, which is the second reading of rezoning ordinance. If we have any don't have any further discussion or questions, I'd entertain a motion. I'll make the motion to approve um, item B for the rezoning ordinance for 24B. Thank you. We have a motion made by Commissioner Oliver. Do we hear a second? No second. Thank you. Uh, second by Commissioner Firstner. 
Um, if we have no further questions or discussion, let's vote. Motion carries with the mayor not in attendance. Okay, this is the last public hearing we have tonight. It's a second reading of ordinance for Ocoee Rentals Trust Properties at 518 2nd Street. Annexation rezoning projects number AX042109 and RZ210412. And Planner Hines, you're on. Thank you. So the next property we have at 518 2nd Street. It's this property also located just south of Center Street, north of East Silver Star Road. Property is about 0 0.15 acres, so it's a little bit under a quarter of an acre in size. It's currently zoned as R1 single family Orange County. It will be rezoned to R1 City of Ocoee. This is just an area view of the property. It is eligible to annex into the city because like the other property on the east is um, located near the city of Ocoee and then also on the north, I mean not the north, the south side. It's the city of Ocoee. This is just a future land use map showing the low density residential so it's in line with that. And they're also annexing in for water connection as well and also being eligible. And staff, as well as the DRC and Planning and Zoning Commission, all recommend approval of rezoning from R1 Orange County to R1 City of Ocoee for single family zoning. And if you have any questions, I can answer those. Do we have any questions for Mr. Hines? If not, we'll open up. Do you have a question? I'm sorry. Yes. And, and this is really a, uh, more of an educational piece. Uh, what's the benefit to residents? or property owners when they annex from the county into the city of Ocoee? So um, one of the benefits is for water service and then also for city benefits such as fire and police service as well. Director Rumor, would you like to uh, chime in? I'd like to add that. That's a, yeah. Thank you for challenging him with that question. <laughs> <laughs> Our benefit is obviously we get to code enforce these properties now and provide city services to them and start bringing them in and keeping them maintained how we want to. Uh, benefits to the citizens will be those uh, tangible items like being able to use the Lakeshore Center and Beach Center, um, being able to come and converse with the commission and be a part of the city in an easier atmosphere than going downtown and good luck trying to find a seat and a place to park. But get to utilize all the city facilities that way. Uh, upon annexation, the properties that are in the county, they drop the unincorporated county tax and the unincorporated fire and the city millage gets replaced in that. They still pay full county taxes. <coughs> they pay the city's millage. Uh, you guys are doing a great job of lowering that millage. So right now we're just a tick above the, the, the two uh, county, but we'll be right in line with them, I suspect, soon. Does that help? Yes, I, I think that. And it helps our population. Right, and, and I think that's important uh, because there may be some property owners out there that don't really understand the benefits of annexation into the city from the county. And I think it's, it's important that we share that with them uh, from this uh, position. Thank you. Yes, and city managers really ha uh, leaned on us to try to find any property. It's better to pay us taxes in perpetuity. Specifically this area, he's identified as an area to provide water. So you're gonna see in the next couple of meetings, next meeting there's gonna be another eight annexations of properties in this area, connecting the city water and becoming a city resident. I'm happy to see these, these enclaves being brought into the city. Yes. Yes, it's a benefit to me, all of us. Um, okay, it's a public hearing. Like to open a public hearing. Anyone in the, in the commission like to say anything? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Could you please read the ordinance, Mr. Cookson? Ordinances. Yes, this is the annexation ordinance, an ordinance of the city of Ecoy, Florida annexing into the corporate limits of the city of Ocoee, Florida, certain real property containing approximately 0.15 acres, located on the west side of 2nd Street, approximately 276 feet south of Center Street, and about 312 feet northeast of the intersection of Nay Street and 2nd Street, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Finding said annexation to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, the Ocoee City Code, providing for and authorizing the updating of official city maps, providing direction to the city clerk, providing for severability, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for an effective date. And the rezoning ordinance is an ordinance of the city of Ocoee, Florida, changing the zoning classification from Orange County R1 single family to C1 
city of Ocoee R1 single family dwelling on certain real property containing approximately 0.15 acres located on the west side of 2nd Street, approximately 276 feet south of Center Street, and about 312 feet northeast of the intersection of May Street and 2nd Street, pursuant to the application submitted by the property owner. Finding such zoning to be consistent with the Ocoee Comprehensive Plan, providing for and authorizing the revision of the official city zoning map, repealing inconsistent ordinances, providing for severability, providing for and effectively. Thank you. Uh, unless there's further discussion, we'd entertain a motion for the second reading annex annexation ordinance, which is 25A. Do I hear an ordinance? Uh, motion. I make a motion to approve the annexation. Motion made by Commissioner Firstner. Do I hear a second? I'll second it. Second by Commissioner Brinson. With that, if there is no further discussion, let's vote. Again, motion carries with the mayor not in attendance. Move on to item 25B, which is a second reading of rezoning ordinance. Unless there's further discussion, we'd entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the rezoning ordinance. Motion made by Commissioner Firstner. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Commissioner Oliver. If there isn't any further discussion, let's vote. Motion carries with the mayor not in attendance. Well, thank you. Um, let's move on to item number 27, the appointment of a districting Districting Commission in accordance with the City of Ocoee Charter, Article 11. I'll get my X's and R's. Section C66. Our City Clerk, would you like to comment on that, please? Um, at the May 18th meeting, there was a staff report that was presented to have the elected officials provide me with or encourage residents to provide applications to our office by June 11th. There was only one application that was received in our office for the Districting Commission. So I just want to encourage the elected officials if, if it would be best just to provide me with names because we don't have any other applications other than the one I provided. Um, we will need a Districting Commission at least established by July as the census will be released um, late September and we will have to meet once the, cen the census is released. Um, it will be a five member board with two alternates, the first and second alternate. Um, so at this point, I think it's just a matter of um, maybe just having a consensus that each elected official provide me with a name um, prior to the July 20th meeting so that we can announce who the districting commission will be made up. So. Is it best that we have what we should have one resident from each district and then we have two alternates, correct? Five, you have five plus two alternates, correct? I don't know that the charter says that. Is it specific? It, it doesn't. Um, I think historically we've kind of done it, done it that way, um, but it doesn't necessarily need to be done that way. Okay. I know we have one. Mr. Laurie's in the audience. He is our one yes. resident that has submitted an application. So I encourage um, residents to please. Um, Fill out your application. I was on the redistricting committee. I, can't, I don't know if anyone else was, but it's very, it's enjoyable. It's um, a lot of information. It is a commitment. Uh, I believe you meet about once every month, correct? Is that about the general may be more? Correct. But it, it is, it's very enlightening. So I recommend residents to please come forward and put your application in. Um, it's a good way to meet other people, but it's also a good way to see your city limits. And again, when we annex more folks in, that means our lines have to change. So. I guess we'll just leave it at that, but please, commissioners, um, submit names, and our residents can also submit their names, correct? Correct, and I, I think what we want is just to be able to bring something at the July 20th where we can finalize the appointment of the members for the board. Okay, so please, great way to get involved. Uh, okay, we'll move on to citizen comments from citizens. I'm going to go ahead and just say something that was spoken at the last meeting. What we asked our residents, or our, not sorry, our comments, citizen comments, our public comments um, to be, we'll set the clock for three minutes. The commission has already agreed not to have discussion with you while you come up and make your comments. And then at their time, when they get to speak at the end, they can make their comments regarding any concerns or questions or comments, They not questions, but comments they have regarding what you stated. Again, I feel that we need to give you three minutes and please, uninterrupted, 
and for you to voice your concerns or comments. So we've already decided that would happen on our end at our last meeting. Let's go ahead with our first person to come up. I'm just gonna go ahead. Evelyn Bar Benton. Would Ms. Benton be here? She in the, if not, we'll go ahead and move on to the next person. If she comes in, we'll go ahead and have her speak. Uh, Melissa Myers. I don't want to be disconcerting, but we'll start the timer up front, but just we want to hear what you have to say. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners. Um, as many of us are aware, um, John Celestine was suffering from a mental health episode and uh, died while being tased by the Okoye Police Department. Um, I'm not here to discuss the particulars of the incident. Um, as we all know, the city is facing a lawsuit um, by the family and we are not allowed to discuss any particulars. Um, I'm here to discuss uh, what the city's actions are going, are going to be going forward um, as there will be more mental health calls. Uh, with our nation enduring financial crisis, loss of family members, it has taken a toll on our citizens' mental state. Uh, there is an increase of suicides, mental health episodes uh, right here in Orange County. First responders, especially our police officers, uh, should not have to deal with mental health crisis calls alone. That's not fair to them. Uh, while they are trained to protect and serve and provide M EMT services, they are not trained to deal with someone who is suffering a mental health crisis and that individual can be very unpredictable in their behavior and can show various levels of erratic emotion. My suggestion is that our police department have mental health professionals on call to assist our officers when being dispatched to someone who is having a mental health episode. Mental health professionals are licensed professionals fully trained on how to de-escalate and handle mental health crisis. Um, now, it was discussed tonight how we have a healthy budget. Our small city can set the bar and do what's right and correct the wrong to prevent another life being taken. As I know, no one wanted Mr. Celestine's life to be taken. A person's mental state is very fragile as we are all one life-changing event away from su something that can alter all of us from our mental state, right? So I would like to hear from the commission your thoughts on my suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Corey Garfone. Commissioners, uh, good evening. My name is Corey Garone. I'm the uh, chairman of the board for the Coe Citizens Advisory uh, Board for the City of Coe, and I'm here to request uh, the commission's assistance on a few items. We are having a huge event, or planning a huge event this year for the 20th anniversary of 9/11 for September, and this, the police board is is uh, heading that up. And so the first thing we need to ask for is we are attempting to use Bill Breeze Park as the location between the uh, hours of 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. that day on September 11th, 2021. Uh, we are requesting to waive, uh, the, the city council to waive the fee for that park and also allow us to use that park, I believe. And we're also here to request uh, we to the funds, since our board has limited funds, we only have about a thousand a year. Uh, we want to request funds to uh, rent a stage for that event. We're going to have the the honor guard from the police department, different speakers, um, and so we would like to request at least three thousand dollars. It could be very much less, but we're trying to request up to that amount uh, for the stage. Um, and then, uh, in the alternative, obviously, if the board could provide less than that, we could still try to work with that and try to raise funds. Um, the third thing is our board actually only has, uh, I think, allotted about a thousand dollars a year uh, with the. I've been the chairman for several years now, 
and we're trying to actually do a lot more for the community, uh, outreach, things like that. This event is going to be hopefully a game changer for the city and also for our board. And so going forward, we'd also like to potentially request an increase in our annual budget for the next fiscal year as well, uh, given this, hopefully given the, the hopeful success of this year, um, this year's event. So hopefully I made my time. <laughs> you had, I think that, in that we, I think this is something that um, at this point we're gonna have to discuss um, with the city manager because this is a point that we, when we said citizen comments, we weren't going to be commenting to you. Correct. Okay, we were giving you the opportunity to speak to the commission. Yep. And so I think we're gonna have to resolve this. Is that something that the police, this, um, this would come through our police chief, the requests like this? Um, how I, th I, I think the issue that uh, the commission is gonna have to deal with, commissioner, is the rental or the waiving of the fees for the park. And I know that is on a Saturday, so I don't know, Corey, if you've checked yet to see if they're yeah. already using the park on that day, because it's on a Saturday. Yes, it and is. And that's available. the big money day. I don't know that anybody would be having um, some other, uh, you know, a wedding or something, but we, we do have to check to see if somebody's already booked a wedding there, yes. because we, it, it wouldn't our, be appropriate. The clerk has found, our clerk, um, Rosie Serrano, has checked. There is no, uh, as of right now, I don't think it's been booked for that morning. We d will be out before noon. Uh, the, the goal is to be out before noon so that the city could potentially rent it out for the rest of the day or whatever else comes up. But based on her check, I believe it's not been booked that morning. Um, okay. So that was why we would hope we were hoping to get that uh, arranged. Yes, sir. How do is, we want is this something that we have to um, vote on as far as uh, the re requesting funds? Yep. Mm -hmm. Is that something that has to go through the commission? The, um, well, yeah, the requesting funds would be a, a budgetary issue, typically. Um, the, the waiving of the fees would be a commission issue. So this is something typically. we would have to address tonight. I think, uh, as for that, it's kind of going off what we were planning to do, but... Um, well, you can, you, you can make the request, and then in your individual comments, if you want to address that and make, you know, okay, get a consensus or something in your individual okay. comments, that would be... Okay, that's fine. That would go along with what we planned, so we can go ahead. If someone wants to address it during their comments, we can go ahead and look at it at that point. Okay, thank you. We'll thank be you. Mo most likely addressing it during Absolutely. the comments. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Um, let's go ahead. Mr. Keller? Good evening. Uh, thank you, uh, first of all, for putting me back on the planning and zoning. Um, I do have a couple of quick things. Um, one of them is in the uh, sawmill subdivision. Uh, we had to wait until everybody else around us got the um, uh, reclaimed water. Now that that's been done, um, it's been a few years since everybody around us has got the reclaimed. Uh, sawmill could use that reclaimed water as well. Uh, right now we have to pay the higher prices for, uh, for watering our lawns and all that because, because we don't have that. So. With the budget coming up, what we thought we would do is come out and ask ahead of time to see if we can get that in the next year's budget so that we can start moving to have reclaimed water um, and finish off that area of the, of the city. Um, second item that I would like to bring up is, again, a budget item, um, and that would be um, the fact that the police uh, firing range is on, off of Clark Road. We're building some more on there. A um, few years back, we had gotten some money out of, uh, or had planned to get some money out of the state for that. Since we are a regional area, we're used by um, the, the state, the federal, um, and a number of the cities around us. Uh, so what we'd like to do is see if we can possibly, A, get some money back in the budget to move our firing range because it's starting to encroach on or the the new building is starting to encroach on that area. And second, see if maybe we can look again to get the uh, count of the state and possibly the federal government to uh, put some money into that since they use it as well. Um, since this is coming up on a big election year, um, as far as the governor and the uh, Senate, uh, House and Senate uh, for, for the state as well as for the uh, federal, now would be a good time to be hitting these uh, legislators to see if we can get some money. And last but not least, um, the zip code, um, same, same thing. Especially now that they're starting to move towards um, tax money coming out to, uh, for the, um, back to the cities for, for online, 
you wanted to have our zip code so that we can get the money instead of money from our citizens who are paying, paying uh, sales tax over the internet, having it go to the uh, cities and the county surrounding us, even though they're our residents and that money should be coming back to us. So those, are, those were my three hot topics. Um, be glad to discuss any of them with any of you <coughs> off, uh, you know, after the committee meeting since we've only got like 10 seconds left. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Moyer. My name's Jim Moyer. I live in Arden Park North. I called my presentation working together. First, I want to acknowledge Caribbean American Heritage Month, also Pride Month, and coming up in a few days, Juneteenth. But I entitled it Working Together because the United States as a country, the various countries in the world, we don't do as well when we don't work together with each other. We do better when we do work together. Examples, World War II after Pearl Harbor attack, but there was communication information that could have possibly avoided the attack. With 9-11, there was some information that could have been shared, which is why, uh, why we put over a dozen uh, different agencies together to protect this country, including information that was right down the street in Hollywood, Florida. So I'm here to advocate for the remembrance of 911 and to propose, a, and I'm doing this as a citizen of a COE, not as a member of any board or council, to propose that we we uh, promote the 20th anniversary of 9-11, but also make it an annual event where we not only remember 9-11, but we remember the benefits of working together as a society, as people, uh, citizens, volunteers, elected officials, every level of go government. When we work together, we accomplish more. When we fight each other, we accomplish a lot less. So thank you for the opportunity to speak and God bless you all. Thank you. By any chance did Miss Benton return? Okay, hopefully we invite her back another evening. Um, now we'll go to comments from our commissioners and let me just restate that we did agree that we would be speaking for 10, you have 10 minutes on the clock to speak and then at the end of the meeting after it's adjourned, if any commissioner continues to want to have more to say, if they would just allow those members of the dais to leave so they can have their 10 minutes again at the end to make any comments to the citizens that are city related um, comments which will go on for another 10 minutes if any commissioner wishes to speak after the adjournment of the commission. So let's go ahead, we'll start with Commissioner Brinson. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, school's out. So with, with school's out, kind of sort of in a way because we also have summer school that's in uh, this year, uh, a lot of summer school actually. Uh, so safety is, is paramount. Our kids are, are back on the roads, they're back in the playgrounds, playgrounds are being opened up the parks are being opened up and kids are going on their bicycle rides and whatnot. So I would encourage everyone to be mindful uh, of the safety of our youth when they're traveling. Of course, elder safety is part of that. Uh, water safety, now that it, you know, people are going back out to the beaches and to the pools, I encourage you, make sure that water safety is first and foremost in your mind when you get to, to these water uh, activities that you're gonna be uh, engaging in. This next item is, uh, is, is it's unfortunate that we have to talk about it, but it is something that's been happening so very much in the last uh, couple of months, and that is active shooters. Active shooters is something that is 
I don't know if it's an epidemic. I don't know if it's a trend. I don't know what it is, except that I do know that it is happening, and it's happening across, across the nation. It's happening in people's homes. It's happening in outside of military installations. It's happening in churches. It's happening in publics. So I would encourage everyone also to be mindful. Be mindful of their surroundings. Keep your head on a swivel. Uh, if you see something that doesn't look right, if you see someone who's not acting right, if there's a, si a situation that has occurred that may incite uh, someone to be violent, especially with a firearm, I would encourage you, if you see something, say something. Uh, because some of these, these events could have been uh, avoided had someone just made mention that someone else made comments and or Facebook posting or social media, whatever. But active shooter is, it is, is becoming such a major problem here in the United States. So I encourage you, I encourage you to keep your head on a swivel. Uh, I don't know, is, is uh, Steve Krug still here? Uh, uh, city manager, I don't know if you, you want to uh, take this one for action. That is Blue Jay Way, getting it paved. I know the school is in session. It's kind of tough this year because they're still going to have summer school, but I know we've budgeted for Blue Jay Way to be paved. I just need an update on that, see, see where we are. Uh, I don't want that to fall through the cracks. Uh, let's see here. Mental health, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to comment on Ms. Meyer's comment on, uh, regarding mental health and uh, our first responders. I too believe it's, it's unfortunate and it's unfair that we ask in our first responders to deal with mental health uh, issues. But unfortunately, right now that's the, the state that we are in in America and we have to do something about it. Uh, I do believe that there are some people out there and organizations to include municipalities such as ourselves that can be trailblazers in this area. Uh, but for us to do that, uh, we need a commitment from all, the, all uh, walks. And sometimes you will find that we, we want to do something that's important, uh, such as providing mental health counselors uh, and partner them with first responders. But I've actually uh, sat on a board recently uh, where we are finding that there's a challenge finding mental health counselors, men mental health professionals who are able to do that which we're talking about. And so I would encourage anyone that has a plan, that, that has a solution, uh, that knows of anyone who can, has a group of people who would like to come together to have this conversation and move this needle forward because it is something that's not going to go away. Uh, and just like active shooters, uh, people being uh, either injured and or unfortunately becoming fatalities behind uh, uh, being shot even though they're having a, a mental episode. So I encourage you to, to continue to uh, fight that battle. It is something that is admirable and I look forward to assisting you in that because uh, we do have uh, that to deal with. Uh, Ms. Garoni, I know the 9-11 remembrance is something that, that uh, you mentioned. I think that's, that's also uh, an important event. Uh, we have other events you know, here in Central Florida that we've actually memorialized that were uh, you know, tragic, but far less tragic than 9-11. And so I think it's be important also for us to pay attention to that so we can uh, pay homage and uh, give honor to those who lost their lives, as well as those first responders who were there. Uh, as far as the increase in the budget, I will tell you now, uh, you automatically have my, uh, uh, my support on that. Uh, I know Rob just walked out. Unfortunately, I, I don't know if someone's back there. <clears throat> Mr. Keller, he, he mentioned something regarding reclaimed water. I'd like to know more about that. Maybe we can come together and have a conversation about that. But if there's a, a, a community, a, a subdivision, or a, in a city that does not have a reclaimed water, uh, my first question would be how and why did that happen, and how can we fix it? And cause that's important. Uh, the firing range, I don't know, it, is the police still available? Is the chief still here? Chief, there she is. Hello, sir. Uh, can you make, can, as far as the fire range, uh, are you, is there movement or plan to do something with the fire range? 
That's been a topic of discussion since I came to the city of Ocoee five, almost five years ago. Um, we are always looking at options for that property, either to move it to an off-site location if we're able to get a grant or some other funding that would do that. Um, but it's a work in progress. Okay, I would like to set, set up a time when you and I can meet and uh, along with the city manager to have more conversation regarding that, uh, especially if it's something that's encroaching on private properties. Uh, because that becomes a public safety issue, and we, we got to get that addressed. We can't keep kicking that can down the road. Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Moyer, my man, Mr. Moyer, he's one of those devil dogs I always like to hear and, and, and speak with. Working together is very important to me as well. I think that's something that uh, we don't do enough of uh, because I'm a believer that most of the solutions and the answers to our questions probably are are around us, but because we don't have those conversations and we don't sit down and learn from each other, we don't get the opportunity to get things done expeditiously. We, we kind of, again, kick the can down the road. So I would encourage you to uh, continue that fight that you're fighting. I know you, 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 you speak before us many a times, and I think it's important that uh, you continue to do that. Uh, because if we don't have someone like yourself coming before this commission, uh, then sometimes uh, a lot of our issues will become lost. And I think that is all I have. What are you doing? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Maybe we can spend some money and get that fixed. Um, <laughs> go ahead. We'll hear from Commissioner Firstner. Could you please reset the clock? Thank you. The city of Ocoee is holding its annual calendar photo contest. It runs through August 2nd. All the individuals in the city are welcome to submit up to five photos of uh, activities and uh, locations within the city that you'd like to see show up in next year's uh, 2022 calendar. Um, June 1st was the uh, start of hurricane season in uh, the state of Florida. Everyone should pay attention to the weather because it changes very rapidly. Uh, things develop and uh, luckily with the weather services that we have today, we can track these hurricanes and have plenty of time to prepare. But there's no time like the present to uh, check your own homes, prepare, and have at least 72 hours of supplies and food and uh, whatnot to uh, survive a, an impact of a hurricane. As far as the uh, mental health services, I don't think it's a question of what we're gonna do about it up here on the commission, but I think it's a good topic to take up with the police department and see what options they have available to them. Um, and uh, the 9-11, Tribute. I'm all for it. You have my support, but I'd like to see something in writing as far as a plan and an estimate uh, cost of what you're asking for, and I think we can go from there. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Oliver. Um, <clears throat> I, had a, I had a conversation um, with uh, Senator Grace's office uh, actually in the past week or so, and um, we were discussing the um, issue, of, well not the issue, but the uh, celebration of the uh, Okoy scholarships. And um, he's received a lot of phone calls from uh, kids and, and adults in the, uh, that lives in the city of Okoy that would like to take advantage of this. So he's gotten an overwhelming response, uh, overwhelming response to uh, the announcement of the governor signing off on the, uh, the Okoy Master Scholarship. And uh, with that being said, he actually did ask uh, he spoke with um, Parks and Rec about doing a little small, maybe music festival or something where we can actually have these students uh, come to uh, the city in a festival type format to talk about what that scholarship means to them. So he proposed doing a, um, a, a, a scholarship celebration uh, some, sometime in June, actually June 26th. And we did speak with Parks and Rec to see if that date available. And uh, it was available. And uh, he would like to propose that we have a small celebration. We bring the kids out, the parents out, and maybe a few uh, food vendors and some music to actually uh, celebrate uh, this, uh, uh, this event uh, that was signed by our governor. 
the, uh, he was requesting the uh, waiver of the fees, uh, a police presence, some trash bins, and a porta potty. So that's what the request is uh, set forth. Do we do a consensus on that, or or do we discuss that? So I'm I'm proposing that we get behind this type of uh, celebration. Any discussion from the? I don't want to interrupt your uh, ten minutes, but any discussion? Is that what you're asking for? Yes. Okay, I guess we have to stop the clock for a second. I guess that's appropriate if this is. Um, I think going with Mr. Firstner's that we want something. You know, we really should. We should be asking for a actual presentation, an actual something in writing, because what it's going to cost the city, and that's the same thing. It's going for the 9/11 that what's it, what is the cost incurred um, and what is what are they asking for I mean we tend to we tend to authorize things in general and I think that we we really should be getting something in writing an actual presentation before us as to what these events are and not just the brief I'm not no disrespect to you please um, but we really I think in general we should have some uh, something in front of us telling us what it's going to be what's the cost what is the actual, what is the person or whoever is putting it on, what are they asking us to waive? Because a lot of times we don't waive the police and we don't waive the cost of the porta potty. These are things that I think we as a city, sh we're spending our citizens' money. We should know um, exactly what the programs are asking for. That's my opinion. Okay. All right, well, I, um, again, I would like to partner with them and I just, um, given the, um, the things that was asked for, the date, the event is actually a small music festival where we bring in citizens and where the kids that are applying for these scholarships to give an essay about what this means to them, uh, the parents to support them, uh, a food vendor, some music. Uh, they, re they requested the uh, police presence, the uh, waiver of the fees, trash bins and porta potties. So again, I, I personally, since I, a lot of things I champion is for the, the kids in our city. So I think it's important that as we look at, we look uh, to get back to what we call normal, that it will be uh, important that we get behind events like this. The, the, uh, Apopka's already doing things. Uh, Winter Garden's already doing a lot of things. I don't think that it's really uh, um, uh, something that, that uh, takes a lot of thought when it comes to our kids. It doesn't take uh, an engineering plan to figure out how do we do something uh, uh, on, our, on our lawn for our kids uh, to show them that we support them and we, we appreciate them. So. Uh, with that being said, I'll just make a motion that we actually get behind this event. Okay. Yeah. So we what, have, you're, you're, I'm, you I'm, know the I'm, funds, how much you're, you're no, fu no funds, so, okay, uh, they're, so just, they're taking care of all the funds. They were just simp simply asking for uh, a police presence, maybe one officer mm -hmm. just there to make sure that everything's okay. Uh, a waiver of the fees for the park and uh, a trash bin, a couple of trash bins to put trash in to make sure the park is uh, maintained and uh, a porta party so folks can use the restroom. The stage and all that other stuff is actually paid for by uh, Senator Brace's office. So I think the motion is to waive the fee for the venue and um, waive any charges for, or have the city bear the cost of the police presence and bringing um, the trash trash bins um, pay for the cost of the trash bins or actually bring just provide the trash provide bins the that trash we, bins. we normally will put out there just I think they're usually like paper bins with plastic bags in them in a, in a porta potty so Rob how would how would that the funding well, of that it, when we had um, residential trash we we had those things and typically as part of the franchise for designated city events we get them to bring in the trash cans and take away the trash for no cost so I don't know if we could say we could get them to do it for no cost or might be some cost to the city on that um, we don't have any porta potties or anything so that would be a direct cost to the city if they had to bring porta potties in and uh, depending on the number of people we have a requirement for any group using the park for uh, a certain number of police officers that would get paid off duty. And I don't know what the rate is, 30, 40, probably about $40 an hour. So um, 
we, we probably want to have that ratio of off-duty officers there the same for something we authorize as what we require everybody else to do would be my recommendation. So there, I mean, with overtime or off-duty pay and trash and porta potties, what, what date were we talking? I'm sorry. June 26. Okay, so I mean, it, it could be up to a thousand dollars. I think if that's something the commission wanted to do out of um, contingency, that would probably cover the cost of those things. But when you're talking about food trucks and you're not giving us a number of how many people are in attendance, I have concerns. It'll be less over than that. 150 people. Less than 150. I truly believe that we, we in the future, whatever we do, we have to have something in writing put in front of us for an attend for what is asking us and to be defined. It's not fair to ask the, um, the police advisory board that same item and then to let the next person come along without that. I, that's, it's not the event, it's that we have to maintain fairness to every event that we offer within the city. Unfortunately, we've had events before with this exact same format, and these things were not asked. And we need so to we, change we, that. Okay, well that's fine. We, we could do that, but we do it for one. We have to do it for all. Um, again, uh, there's a motion on the floor. There is a um, motion. Do I hear a second? Are the comments finished? We're at, well, we're asking for a second before we, I guess we go on. What's, what's the motion? The motion is to waive the fees for the um, event center and authorize uh, $1,000 from contingency to provide um, police presence and uh, and the trash. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll second it. Okay, we, have a, we have a motion from Commissioner Oliver, seconded by Commissioner Brinson. Any further discussion? Let's vote. I'd just like to say that I support, I voted for it because I support the event, but I agree with uh, Commissioner Wilson. I think we need to see these things in front of us, you know, a little better spelled out with a little preparation so we have time to think about it. Yeah, and, and if I may chime in, I, I, was, I was slow to vote yes. I did vote yes because I do support it. Um, but in the interest of record keeping uh, for the city and its municipalities, we, we have to have good record keeping. Uh, and with that said, having items, applications, and whatever the parks and rec need to be filled out, is, I think it's important. Thank you. Is that a motion for the, for the future that, that we do not have this discussion? I voted no. It's not for the event. It's because I believe that we should have more time. We should, things should not be put up to us. Especially we're not having the next meeting until June the, 20th. July the, July 20th. July 20th, that I want to see more time for these. I think we need to have um, a plan and we don't need to have things sprung on us two weeks before, three weeks before the next meeting. So that is my, the reason I voted no. Uh, Rob, I mean, isn't there something in place already requ requiring that, but the commission is kind of waives that requirement? I don't know if there's something in here. place. I mean, typically um, we understand some of these things that come up, we know there's going to be 100 people. We ask the police department to stop by. I, I think when you start hitting 150, 200 people, um, we're typically going to look at that and probably pass that through staff, just like we would do if someone came in and filled out a special event permit. Um, so there's, you know, 100 is kind of the number where instead of having somebody come off the street, you know, one or two guys just park and, and walk, park, walk, and talk type thing. Um, like I said, trash was never an issue before because we had trash in the house. Now they really can charge us for all these things. Um, and we used to have those restrooms down by the lake too, and we don't have those anymore. So now typically, you know, you start getting 100 people, we have to get some type of um, porta potties in. So. A couple of things we never had to pay for before that uh, we probably need to consider now when we're looking at these things. And, and I, I would then, with that said, <clears throat> I would think maybe uh, we can c get together with uh, Mark Johnson, the director of Parks and Rec, and, and y'all can give us direction so we have a standard 
which we yeah, can Yeah, we can actually come up with a form. I, yeah. I think, and part of Commissioner Wilson's issue is a lot of times these come up at the last minute, so, um, you know, it, it's hard to put those numbers together at the last minute and actually know. That's why I'm saying, I think probably $1,000 will pay for, you know, maybe four police officers and, and you know, from looking at the number that we've been told, 150, I think that, that would probably cover it. Right, because I, 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 I understand that we, we want that lead time, mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes, it, it, in fact, oftentimes, we just don't have it, uh, especially at this time of the year when we're canceling our meetings for Memorial Day and Fourth of July, which I don't agree with, but I vote. But, <laughs> but th these are the times of the year where these these events are happening. So we need something in place to you know satisfy everyone on the commission, as well as the city, as well as to give uh, people out there an opportunity to put on events. Because uh, sometimes it's it's just kind of spur of the moment. Hey, I like to do this, and they need some type of. We can come up with some guideline if you'd like, and then right. as soon as that request is made, you could all just pull it out and say, "Here's the things that we have to consider, and there's a cost for each one." Right. I think so, that'll I think that'll go over well. And that way, everyone's on the same sheet of music. Thank you. Well, well just Robert, that kind of. Do you want to continue? Yeah, just kind of add to that. Start the clock again for you. It's always in the morning. Uh, just to, but just to react, just to add to that. Uh, before tonight, I did speak with the city manager about this event. I also spoke with Parks and Rec. Uh, about the event. So I did go through the proper chain of command behind the scenes to talk to them about this event and what that means. I've also connected Senator Brace's office with Parks and Rec. So this is the first time you're hearing this, uh, but this is not the first time that they're, they've heard this. So it did come before them understanding the time constraints that we did have. So it ha I had to bring it up tonight because of that. We were, we were quickly uh, um, approaching uh, the, uh, the date. So that conversation was actually had. Um, also, one of the things that, uh, uh, we, um, that we, we discussed in our last meeting, we talked about, uh, we had a, a very successful event, uh, well, prior to that, we had a very successful event, uh, our music festival. Uh, I was not able to attend, but I got a lot of great feedback from citizens about the music festival. They really enjoyed that. Um, with that being said, we're trying to look at what is normal going to look like for us when we have cities around us that are, are starting to open back up and starting to see normal, and it's good to see the chairs out here without the shrink wrap on them. And it's good to see faces that we haven't seen in a long time come to the diocese. One of the things that we've been discussing uh, um, with uh, other citizens is the fact that we used to have food truck Fridays and movie on the lawn, those kind of things, and uh, they're very interested in bringing those things back. Um, so again, uh, I don't know what, what kind of action item will take to uh, get Parks and Rec to start looking at how do we put on an event, uh, a couple events, maybe we just did two or three events uh, this summer where we can actually have a, a food truck Friday or a movie on the lawn Saturday to kind of get some families to come back out to, to the park. Because we're, back, we're back on the park again, so um, I have not discussed that with anyone uh, behind the scenes. Uh, again, just wanted to kind of bring that back up again to see how do we uh, uh, get uh, Parks and Rec engaged in that again I know we, we used to have it, we used to love it, it was a great, great event, and as we start looking for normal, uh, this question would be for the city manager, is that something that we could maybe start discussing behind the scenes yeah. with uh, the Parks and Rec? Yeah, I think the reason, uh, we, we did have it, and I think um, as it went on, we had a little less and less attendance, I think that was the same night we had uh, the movie in the park, and um, some of the trucks pulled out as the attendance waned, and then COVID came, so. Um, it's something that um, you know we could talk with uh, the parks rec director. He probably has a little better idea of exactly what happened before to um, you know to limit the, the attendance go down and uh, losing the the food trucks. But uh, yeah, it's a great idea. It's some it's a great location for it. Um, it's just important to keep the people coming. And as soon as the people don't come, the food trucks want to pull out, and then the whole thing comes crashing down. So. Might be a good time to look at that again. I think with, 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 with coming off of COVID and folks being um, uh, succumbing to cabin fever, I think it'd be great. Uh, they, they'd probably uh, really run it to get out of the house and to, to get in, involved back into the community again. So uh, uh, again, not proposing that we do something every month, just maybe look at one or two events this summer before, uh, before Labor Day, before we get back to work and back to what we would call our normal uh, routines. So with the summer, uh, right, right in the middle of summer, or the beginning of summer, I think that might be something that we can discuss 
uh, with them and find out if we can come up with some recommendations before the commission. Uh, again, we're not meeting again until July, so here we are another month we got to go through to figure out, come up with a plan to try to do something quickly in August or September. So uh, again, I don't, again, I just don't agree with missing a meeting in July because of things like this. We just cannot get jump start on things because we are failing to meet when we really don't have to uh, cancel meetings. So I have a slight, slight issue with that. I know we have to take a breather and recharge, but uh, again, the, 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 the city continues to move forward and we have to continue to move with the city and, and take some time, but we still have to mind the business of the city. Um, so I will get with you uh, this week and talk to uh, the uh, park director or parks and rec and see if we can possibly bring back one or two of these events. Uh, also, the um, I had a conversation with, um, I spoke with the Florida uh, Ethics Commission, had some conversation with a couple of their attorneys. I also had some conversation with the Attorney General's office concerning uh, the format that we chose to do a town hall meeting after our meeting. Um, it was one thing that uh, I did speak when I, when I spoke to the Florida Ethics Commission, uh, they pointed out that our meeting goes from gavel to gavel. Any discussions outside of that meeting where a camera's rolling or a commissioner and I have left that building could put us in a very uh, peculiar situation uh, when it comes to uh, civil and criminal violations. So what they pointed out to me was the fact that uh, in Florida statutes uh, 286.011, that the format that we chose uh, to have these town hall meetings after our meeting is totally out of order. It is a slippery slope according to them. Um, I would uh, ask that our city attorney uh, contact them as well to find out exactly how do we do this? Because again, they pointed out to me the fact that if a uh, commissioner waits after the meeting, after the gavel is closed, there is no public notice uh, or open notice or public meeting that's hap happening after that, then there could be violations of our Florida Sunshine Law according to the uh, Sunshine Law manual. Uh, this is also, uh, there's been litigated. This, this same format, exactly what we're talking about, has also been litigated throughout the state of Florida uh, on several occasions, uh, they gave me some cases, some case studies that they, uh, they talked about. But before we go down this road, I want to make sure that we're doing things the right way. Uh, it sounds good. I voted, say, I, I voted yes for it because it sounded like a great idea at the time. But when I left here, I got to thinking about that and thinking what are the risks that we take by doing these things. Therefore, I contacted the uh, Florida Ethics Commission and I also contacted the Attorney General's office in Tallahassee and this is the, the guidance that they gave me. They, they told me that uh, you are, this is a very slippery slope, it's been litigated before, and we might need to reconsider our format on how we do things after our meetings. So again, if we can get it all in 10 minutes, that's fine, but lots of times we can't. Um, that's just it, we're meeting from month to month right now in the summer, and there's so much that's going on, and, and, and it's hard to get things done in, in 10 minutes. So again, um, I'm just going to, going to quote that and ask that the, our, our, our city attorney would actually uh, make, make a couple phone calls and ask about that to see are we really doing things the right way, maybe come back to the next meeting and determine do we need to go to some other type of format or um, how do we prevent ourselves from breaking any sunshine laws, may it be civil or criminal. Um, that being said, I also recently uh, took a trip to um, Station 38, 38, and I had some conversation with the city manager about a backup generator. So I just want to um, get uh, some updates on that. We have a fire station that does not have a backup generator. It's a temporary fire station, so that means during a hurricane, they may not be in that location, but we have inclement weather in the state of Florida. So that means that we have high winds, we have uh, rainstorms come, come through, and if that fire station is uh, not on a battery backup, then uh, they may miss call, they may miss a, a, a siren or alarm that alerts them that there's something going on. So in the interest of public safety, uh, I did uh, speak with the city manager about getting the ball rolling for a, uh, a backup generator. Um, understand it's not gonna happen overnight, but uh, I wanna kind of get an update to see where we were on uh, getting that, that taken care of. Yeah, I think uh, Deputy Chief Smothers can address that. I think he's still here.
I guess we'll stop the clock if the is that because Rob spoke or well we have Chief Smothers. Oh I'm sorry, yes, Hi. stop the clock please. Uh, yes, uh, Chief Miller's been in touch with uh, Steve Krug on that and, and uh, has been working on getting a generator for that station. I actually uh, spoke to Steve earlier tonight to get an update. Um, he's looking at a couple of different options. Um, his staff has looked into getting uh, the Generac type residential uh, generator, which is propane operated. If he does that, it's going to be the only propane operated uh, generator in the city. So he's also looking at a uh, diesel. Uh, powered one as well. Uh, he is working on it. We're expecting, uh, he is expecting numbers back on how much it will cost for both those options uh, sometime tomorrow. Awesome. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Again, that was definitely a, um, a big concern of mine and um, I actually had a hard time sleeping over that one, uh, understanding the amount of residents that they, that they actually cover when it comes to uh, um, safety issues. But again, um, I'm glad that we were able to been working on, on that uh, for that fire station. Uh, also, uh, one last item I do have is a uh, clock road widening uh, project. Do you have, um, uh, I know we started March 1st. Uh, just want, I'm getting a lot of calls on that as well, just trying to figure out um, the, the clock road widening project. That's the yeah, I've not heard project. anything. And I, as far as I understand, Commissioner, it's, it's going along well. It's moving forward, I think. Uh, you know, the next uh, the major milestone is probably going to be um, 60 and 90 percent plans, but we're not there yet. Okay. And we knew the plans were probably going to take upwards of uh, 12 months, I think. So, um, but it's still moving forward. Okay. And uh, before I, I yield back to Mayor Pro Tem, I just have uh, my final my final thoughts. And my final thoughts is actually a scripture that I that I read. It's actually it came up today. And it says, this book of laws shall not depart from our mouths, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe, observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your, your, your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. That came from actually Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. And I will yield back to Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you. Um, just some notes here, City Hall will be closed on Monday, July 5th for the 4th of July holiday. Our next commission meeting that is scheduled for July 6th has been canceled, which means we'll be meeting on July 20th is our next commission meeting. Um, I first of all from District 2 would like to thank the police department for their been patrolling on Orlando Avenue. I see there's been a change in the um, traffic situation. People are somewhat maintaining the 30 mile an hour zone. And I would like to see that happening in other parts of the city. But thank you to the PD. I, unfortunately, I know they're giving tickets, but sometimes that's the only way that we can control behavior. If you're in neighborhoods, um, please remember, there's folks walking. These are our children. These are our adults out there walking, riding bikes. And we need to adhere to the speed limits. Also, commissioners, just, I've, you know, we talked about money tonight. We also need to remember that we have been issued money in the budget last year to do things that we feel are appropriate within the city. So there is, you all have your own budgets to work with. I've purchased a speed sign that's on Orlando Avenue that shows what you are, what speed you're traveling. It's been, that sign has traveled to um, Coe Hills Road. It's been on Clark Road. And again, alerting residents that the speed you're going and whether it's over the speed limit, because as we know, Orlando Avenue is 30. I believe Clark Road is 45. We have Coe Hills Road. Again, speeding is happening. Flu Allen, that sign will be traveling around the city. That was something I purchased. It did cost $2,500, but I think it was well worth it for our residents to know what they are traveling on our streets. And if you're going over, you're probably going to get a ticket. So it's the truth of the matter. If there aren't any more, com I'm sorry, um, Mr. Cookson, do you have something you want to say regarding that issue yeah, that I, yeah, was brought up? Commissioner, I, um, uh, all those issues I think were considered when we talked about this. Um, again, um, and, and it may have been my oversight, we should have something, I think we should include something on the agenda that referenced that after the meeting. 
Um, so there is notice and it's on the agenda that uh, this town hall type format may occur. And I'll get with the city clerk on that for, uh, for the next agenda. Um, it's important, I, I agree, there is, there is some, uh, uh, there's some uh, danger of, uh, of some violations there. Um, the, the real issue is this is really supposed to be just kind of general announcements. It's not, uh, not bringing up new business, not discussing business, certainly not voting on anything. Um, but I feel pretty comfortable that if, as long as we're just making announcements, town hall type announcements, not engaging in kind of back and forth between the commissioners, as long as it's noticed on the agenda, um, I, I think we'll be fine. Um, you know, I, I plan to, um, to sit here while that happens um, to make sure uh, we're not doing anything uh, to get anyone thrown in jail. But, but I, I understand the concerns um, have considered those, and, uh, but, but I, think, I think we're well within our rights to do it. We do just need to be careful kind of the subject matter that's talked about um, after the meeting. When it was not noticed, we would not do that tonight. Is it something we should put back on the agenda next meeting so that we are clear as to exactly how that procedure is going to happen? And maybe at that point we could discuss whether it's more advantageous to increase 15 minutes to each um, commissioner and not to do the town hall meeting at the end. That's another option that we could look at where it would all be from gavel to gavel. So again, I'd, I'd request that we put it on the agenda for the next meeting and further discuss it. And at that point, Mr. Cookson, you possibly could do some more research on that. That's fine. So tonight it will not happen, but we'll put it on the agenda for the next meeting to further discuss it. And again, giving Mr. Cookson some time to um, explore that option. So unless there's any further business, I'm sorry, you have something? I have one. Actually, this question is, I don't know if this is for you, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, or, or Rob, or maybe the, the uh, city attorney. This, the speed sign that you purchased mm -hmm. and the rows in which you're putting it on, can, those, can that speed sign be put on rows that belong to the county? Well, it was city money that used this to purchase the sign. Sure. I would like to see it on our, I personally want to see it within district two. I would say I don't think there's anything legal, uh, illegal about it. I don't know that the county, these are like a semi-permanent type mount. So right. um, the one we have up right now, I think it's, it's, on, it's on its own pole. We were talking about, I know the chief was talking about getting a solar panel for it too. So it's not just something you, you, you just attach to a pole really easily or something that's like a semi-permanent type mount. Right, because I think it's a g great idea. And I'm, you know, I, I would like to see that uh, in district one as well. Uh, however, a Koyapapka is a county road. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think you've, you may have seen the one on Blueford that we're talking about. That was one of the ones that using her funds. It's, it's probably more suited for a local street. It's very small. Um, I don't think the majority of people on something like a Koyapapka doing 60 miles an hour would even notice. Hey, they don't do 60. That's the truth. No. <laughs> uh, they do 60 on our I get where you're going with that. And, you know, well, I mean, we, we, I, I don't think it would be you know, that out of the question to use a city sign on a county road where we can patrol. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think that sign would be the no, right I'm, one I'm, for that. Though. I'm asking because if, if I'm looking to procure something of that nature, I want to make sure that I can use it, you know, for the purposes in which I procured it. And so if I get it and then they say, well, you can't put it over there. So, which I, don't I think the biggest. Well, I, uh, I, purchased it for, I purchased it for a lot of our interior streets because that seems to be when they're 30 miles an hour, we'd like people to know it flashes. That's the one that's in the front of the Ocoee Middle School that you see when you're going down. If you go over the speed limit, it starts flashing. Um, I, I personally wanted it for our interior streets and for when neighborhoods say to me, we're having a problem, that we can move it into that neighborhood. Because I, 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 know, I know there's one down, uh, further down on Clarkona Ocoee, that not only does it that flash, but also blinks like uh, blue and red lights uh, when you go over the speed limit. But I, again, I just want to make sure that whatever yep. we're doing. I, I just will okay. tell you, Commissioner, we wouldn't have authorization to put it on a county road without the county giving us that authorization. I don't know that they would right. for that particular sign, but uh, sometimes it's easier to ask for forgiveness than you permission. didn't just say forgiveness. 
So. <laughs> I'm gonna say I bought it for District 2 Interior Streets. <laughs> Any more questions or concerns? This meeting is adjourned. I hit the gavel. Hey. Okay.